Hello folks and welcome to Deadwood. This is by Poor Boy Modding and Bruce's Gaming. And yeah, this is going to be a video on a guide to all of the 23 overpowered productions on the map. And this does have some references to other maps by Poor Boy Modding as some of these mods are used or some of these productions are used on these other maps. But yeah, so there are 23 productions in total we're going to be looking at today. And as I mentioned in my map tour, the premium and platinum expansion is recommended, especially for a lot of these productions to function properly. I'll say about, I think it's about four or five productions require some form of items from either DLCs. Or if you're like a lot of people who just got the platinum expansion at King Bay of Silver and Forest, you know what? That is fine. Also, as quickly mentioned, Time stats will be down below for every individual production, so if there's a particular production you want to look at, I'll be going over in detail on every production, including their throughput every month, which was the most profitable. And yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this section here first, and at the end I'll go over the garbage production as I only pops up in new farm mode. On Farm Manager, start from scratch, garbage production does not pop up. That and sawmill, you cannot sell. You can purchase sawmill production and then sell it for half the price. Buy it on Farm Manager, start from scratch. Maybe that may change in a future update, but I don't know as I, this time recording. But yeah, bottom line at the end of the day, all of these productions are worth purchasing, considering their output and the amount of money you can get in comparison to the startup cost, because... Yeah, some of the buildings we're going to be looking at cost half a mil to purchase, but I guarantee within a matter of months, you'll be able to get that money back with relatively easy. And of course, it depends on what production you're using. And yeah, my personal opinion on why they're very overpowered, because yeah, some of these are in the millions of outputs per month. And I think personally is when you do the production, a lot of times productions are very slow in that, especially base game in that, in comparison, in reality, of what most people are able to farm in a harvest season, even with precision farming and seasons enabled, so I think Poor Boy and Bruce done it in a way so that when you're doing productions, they go bam, done within a month, so if you want to say, save up all your crops and that, and other materials throughout the year, then at a sort of point in the year, we want all your money in. Bam, turn on production within literally a month or two. Depends on the production, because some of them do have some slow outputs, but in general, they are very good. So, that's the intro out of the way. And yeah, I have all the 23 productions we're we'll looking at. I'm going to start off with the Crusher, as I is very vital on Crusher, and have a look at that. So, here we are at the Crusher, and this costs. 500k to buy. You can find this just up north west of the map, or northeast, sorry. And yeah, the crushers here, just buy the quarry in that. And yeah, as I mentioned in my map tour, you can get stones because this does require stone, water, and diesel. You've got an end supply of stone there. And just a very quick mention, even though I've done this over the map tour, there are mountains of stone, so. You can use like the Lizard Forge pickup, pick up all these stones, or do it via excavator, or any way you want, like that as a massive pile, so that is a endless supply. But yeah, so a million input capacity, the output capacity is 500,000. So yeah, you get your materials out of here, or you can set it to distribution. Also, the purchase point is here and does cost half a mil to buy. And your input is just up here. And I like how this actually looks and functions. Admittedly, I didn't cover this in detail in the map tour. I'm going to be changing that going forward. But yeah, so all your liquids and stones goes into here. I see by the bottom right, this produces coal, lime, limestone, dirt, gravel, sand, Iron ore, pay dirt, and stone powder. And these are required for the vast majority, like. So, yeah, 
just in the have a little look. So, at the crusher, so yeah, we've got stones, diesel, and water. And yeah, gone over to the outputs, and this is a simple one recipe. It requires 100 years of stones, 25 years of diesel, and 200 years of water per recipe or per one cycle. And the output is 192 years of coal, 172 years of lime, 138 years of limestone, 196 years of dirt. 156 years of gravel, 143 of sand, 132 of iron ore, 115 of pay dirt, and that's the 115 for stone powder. And yep, yeah, as we go down the road, I'll mention these with the other productions. But yep, yeah, so like your normal productions are not required. But things like BGA and a lot of these productions do require coal. And the only downside is <laughs> during the extensive testing of like 10 hours like 10 20 hours i've done testing on this uh unfortunately there's no other ways of producing coal there's i don't think there's a mod that produces coal in that or at least that has the same fill type as coal as classified as coal so if you want to have all of these productions you may be required to purchase coal but there are a couple of things you can do to purchase coal so the map does offer you some buying container for this so yeah we've got this one here the buying station and you can buy your coal or you can buy your coal not from the multi fruit buy station by a2 studio that doesn't work really that has some of the extra field types we have on the map but overall I've been using the Easy Weight Station and Fruit Shop Extension. And yeah, you can use this and it has no issues to a certain degree with purchasing anything on the map. So anything that's classified as a fill type, this will be able to purchase it. And yeah, if you want to be a bit cheeky, get 3% off, 10% off. Or if you want to say, oh, pay a premium price, then all you can. But yeah, so with this production, you are required to use these for your other productions. Things like iron ore and that, there are other stuff you can use iron ore for. For example, if you go to your productions, go under the platinum expansion. So yeah, you've got your mine shaft there, you can get your iron ore. Yeah, it does cost of core of a mill. Again, with this map now, with like the quarry in that, purchase that, and clear a little bit of stone in that. And I think this can really be a very good use of it. So, but yeah, there's ways of getting iron ore, but all the other productions are relatively useful. The line, you can take it or leave it, either distribute it, sell it. But yeah, so this is a very key production to have. That's why I'm saying this is. Yeah, cost half a mil, but it is worth it. So that is the crusher, 500k to buy. So in terms with the overall output, at maximum recipes and cycles per month, you have to keep this filled up. And to be honest, stones and that diesel, this is very easy. Water you can get for free, stones you can get for free, diesels you can get for cheap, very cheap, depending on what mod you're using and that. But yeah, so your maximum output per month is as following. For the coal, it is 115,200 litres. For your dirt, it is 117,600. For your iron ore, it is 79,200 litres. And you roughly get 90,000 litres of gravel, sand and stone powder. I'll just clump those together a bit, done a bit of an average of 150 litres. And yeah, total up by 600. That's how I got the 90,000. So give or take an extra thousand or two. But yeah, so that is the crusher. Next, we'll head on to the sawmill. So yeah, here we are at the sawmill. Once again, this is one of the productions that does require the platinum expansion because you do 
require some things like wood beams and that, but yeah, we'll go over all that in a sec and get long planks as well. But yeah, 250k to buy, and this is located on the top left corner of the map, pretty much. So yeah, does cost a quarter of a mil to buy, you can sell it, but you won't be able to get rid of this, I've tried this. So yeah, your input points are here, so... Go to build mode, I do apologise about noise, I'll try to speak over this, so... Obviously I've got the markers enabled, but even without the markers... This little patch texture here is where your input is for your timber. And your output for your items are here, over here, over there at the far corner, and over here. And again, for a lot of productions, this is a very key thing, especially if you're doing carpentry. And trust me, when we get to carpentry, it is worth it. I just, yeah, nothing else to say about it. But yeah, also your fill points for your propane and coal is here, so you can duck this over here. Also, your like your bark and sawdust and that can come out of here. Go into actually you know what? Let's go somewhere over here a sec. So yeah, go to your sawmill. So with this you can get planks, wood beams, long planks, and dry lumber. In terms of capacity, I know it's empty at the moment. The wood is approximately four or i I'll say five million litres, or could be four million litres, I don't know. At most I've had in this was about four hundred thousand litres of timber. And that is a lot of wood. And to be honest, for a testing map and that for just purely testing this, I'm not gonna spend 10, 20 hours on filling this up. So that's how long it would take, about 10 hours of solid logging, full focus mode to fill that wood fill point up, but I'll say approximately is 5 million, li 5 million liters. For your coal and propane, it's a lot easier, 500,000 liters. You can get propane by purchasing it or from another production, which we'll look at in a bit. And yeah, different recipes and that. And yeah, with this one, actually ain't too bad the labeling, it's with this one here I have a little bit of a funny thing because it said wood planks here, wood planks here but with the picture of dry lumber. But yeah, so dry lumber is correct. And yeah, if you're not using the platinum expansion, you only be able to do your dry lumber and your normal planks. Things like wood beams and long planks you aren't able to do. Also in terms with your output capacity, that is 250,000 litres for things like your sawdust and that, for your bark and that, wood chips, for your planks, your beams and all that, that is 100,000 litres. And trust me, trying to get dry lumber, that is the hardest one to get. Just in terms with, compared to the output of everything else, and the usage of it. Dry lumber is heavily required at the carpentry, but yeah, I'll go over that when we do the carpentry next or later on, depending on how I'm going to sort this out. But yeah, in terms with like your recipes and that, so just for your normal planks and that, 300 litres of wood and 75 litres of coal, that gets you 200 litres of planks, 125 of wood chips, 100 litres of bark, and 75 zeros of sawdust and once again bark and sawdust can be sold or used elsewhere down the road for other productions and yet yeah, similar with wood beams all these are relatively close in cycles per month your long planks are a little bit less in terms of output that because the planks are longer the dry lumber does require propane but yeah, that one doesn't, it's just the dry lumber. Again, wood planks, it's quite confusing that, but maybe in an update that would be changed from planks to dry lumber. I don't know if Poor Boy One is going to do this, but it's one of those things I've noticed, amongst other things, I'm going to be contacting him by the time this video comes out, hopefully on Sunday or Monday. 
And yeah, also you do have some lower output ones down here. But regardless, so I've gone over a lot of these. I'm not sure if I, no, I haven't done all of them. But for example, for your planks and that, so at 360 cycles per month, it requires 108,000 years of wood, 27,000 years of coal, and from that you get 72,000 of your planks, 36,000 years of bark, 45,000 years of wood chip, and 27,000 years of sawdust. And yep, yeah, same one down here and that for your wood beams and that. For your long planks, slightly less wood input, and that is 72,000 years of wood a month, 72,000 years a month. 27,000 years of coal, and from that you get 54,000 years of long planks, 36,000 years of bark, 45,000 of wood chips, and 27,000 years of sawdust. For the dry lumber, 108 and 27,000 years as the others, and from that you get 72,000 years of dry lumber, 36,000 years of bark, 45,000 chips, and 27,000 years of sawdust. And for the low output of wood planks or dry, basically dry lumber here, 36,000 years of wood, so forget about coal and propane. And yet, yeah, you get a lot of less of an output, and that is 18,000 years of dry lumber, 9,000 years of plank, no, sorry, 9,000 years of bark, 12,000 years of wood chips, and 6,000 years of sawdust. So yeah, that is a very less output, and if you just do the dry lumber and that, all you can get a month is 90,000 years, and as we look at the carpentry, you are going to require more than 90,000 years a month to have it at maximum capacity, but again, I'm just going over the theoretical maximum output so that you can get. Obviously, it depends on your own capabilities, of how much money you got, what you're going to spend and all that, etc. But yeah, so overall, it's actually not that bad. So, just have over here. I do love the look of this and that. So, I've got a couple of items spawned already. So, this is going to be your dry lumber. And yeah, your planks and non planks, they're typical base game and platinum expansion. So, I'm not going to go over those too much. They do weigh two tons. And each pallet, quote unquote, or wrapped bag, or whatever you want to call it, is 2,000 years. So, yeah, 2.1 tons. Whatever you're using, unless it's a wheel, wheel loader, I do recommend some form of weight. And yeah, just show to get the output out for your bark and sawdust. Let's just head over here. So yeah, go to the right. Sold us in that one. So yeah, obviously you can use these trailers as part of the map. So going to my mods, so Deadwood, you've got the side dump now, 104,000 years. Or you've got this one over here, the Wilson Trader. And yep, yeah, you've got a million layer capacity. And of course, if you want to use some of the TARDIS stuff, that will work. So go to our TARDIS Traders. That will work. Along with the Colossus Pack, and pretty much any mod that lets you fill up with anything, as long as it's a classified field type and the mod supports it. No issues whatsoever, plenty of trade options and that. I just went with the two most popular ones in terms of setting all this up. So yeah, this is the sawmill, 250000 to buy, definitely worth purchasing. And next we're going to be looking at the grain mill. And first of all, I'd like to admit I completely did not notice this in my map tour and that. I just assumed they were normal productions, but of course, as you know, Poor Boy Modding does some awesome production stuff. So yeah, let's go into here. So we have a look. So first of all, you can produce 
not just your wheat, barley, oats, sorghum, flour, cream juice, corn flour, canola flour, sunflower flour, and soybean flour. First of all, I would say in terms with, is it worth doing? Soybeans, personally, I say no. You'll get more money selling soybeans as is, or use it for another production. Sunflower, again, it's around that same mark. Similar with corn, again, it's on that fine borderline of whether or not it's worth it for corn to sell as is, or make it as flour, or if you want to do May silage, or use corn in that for dry corn production at the corn dryer, which we'll look at in a bit. Canola flour, I'll say it's relatively worth it in that. It's like, it's like with sorghum flour, it's worth doing in that, so... Yeah, personally I wouldn't do corn, sunflower or soybean flour. But yeah, so... Once again, this is overpowered because the cycles per month are high. In terms of the output. As well, it does require the paper roll. There is a production for paper roll on the map. And yeah, again, to have this as a fully function, you do require the platinum expansion. That's why... Personally, the premium expansion is only recommended for the root crop processing and for the garbage production. But apart from that, you don't really need the premium, no, yeah, premium expansion. Try not to get the two mixed up. But the platinum expansion, I highly recommend it. And you and that, but the little money of that goes to me. So, a little shameless oh, self promo there. But, anyways, let's look at the green mill. As you can see, it is same as the base game model asset, so the build looks exactly the same. Input is over here, and over here, and your output is here. So, feel free to use either of these. Actually, no, that is a cell point, so ignore that. Oh, was it one or not? Why that was Sarah again? One of the things I forgot to delete while well, setting this all up. Yeah, just like that. But anyway, so the grey mill base game has set in that. And yeah, it does require the paper roll, as I mentioned. In terms with capacities for the paper, as you can see, it is 100,000 litres. For your grains and that, for your cro other crops that going in, 250,000 litres. And as you can see, your flour is a hundred thousand litre capacity. And yet, yeah, the flour comes out the same as normal. I'll get that spawned up in a sec. But yeah, terms with throughput and output and that. So, going with the wheat flour and that. This is the craziest of the one at 3600 cycles per month. 23 and 50 in and you get 20 flour out. So... In a month, Nat, you'll get 72,000 litres of wheat flour, and that requires 90,000 litres of wheat and 180,000 litres of PS if you're using the Platinum expansion. But again, as you see later, again, this is how this all integrates into each other, Nat. There is a deadwood production off for the paper roll and the carton roll, and that is truly overpowered. So, 180,000 litres of paper roll. Don't swear a thing, my love, about that. <laughs> anyway, <so> then, <coughs> I went to do oat flour now. Again, I'm going over a lot of the common stuff and that. Also, I did barley flour as well, just knows some of my notes. But yeah, barley flour, 18,000 years of barley and 30,000 years of paper roll. You get 13,800 flour. For your oat flour, that requires 18,000 years of oats and 60,000 years. Yep, 60,000 litres of paper. And from that you get 22,800 litres of flour. For your sorghum flour, that requires 42,000 litres of sorghum and 60,000 litres of paper. And from that you get 28,800. And for your corn flour, that requires 54,000 litres of corn and 60,000 litres of paper. And from that, you get 33,600. Didn't do canola and sunflower as I just ran out of time testing this. But soybean flour, that requires 66,000 litres and 60,000 litres of paper to get 
45,600 euros of flour. So again, that's why I mentioned you get you're using more soybeans to get the flour out, and soybeans are worth more than flour. So that's why personally I don't recommend it. If it was me for again, this is my opinion for a pure financial. I appreciate the effort of the fact that we have this as an option. Because yeah, some parts of the world do use soybean flour for certain properties and that. Again, depends on what you're using the flour for, if it's for like pasta, bread, cakes and that, or just like animal feed and that. In a way, not animal feed and that, but other baking stuff and that. But yeah, so yeah, 96,000 to buy, I forgot to mention that. And yeah, so this can be found under build mode, so under factories. Go towards near the end. So yeah, got a green mill. 96,000, not too bad. But yeah, this I highly recommend. But yeah, so that is the green mill. And since we're here, I'll head over to the bakery, but I'll show you the pallets a sec. So right, now we're on to the bakery, and this is 50,000 to buy, and I just shown with another save, show the flour and that. But yeah, similar with the flour, also the bread is liftable pads, so I do have that mod enabled. But yeah, that's only for the base game product, so even with all the overpowered stuff, you're still going to get the same product, and they've got the liftable bells mod, or pallets and all that. Include for the premium and platinum expansion stuff by you, they will work. But yeah, anyway, so the bakery, 50 grand to buy, find that under build mode. And go into the trigger here and that. So, we look at the bakery and that, you've got bread and cake. So, unlike with the base game version, this is, again, overpowered. So, turn for the capacity is 165,000 years for the flour. And 57,000 years for the rest, including the outputs. So yeah, for bread and that, it's a ratio of one flour gets you 10 bread, as it's simplest form, or in this case, two flour to 20 bread per cycle. There are 2,160 cycles per month, so all you need to do is put 4,320 liters of flour in a month, at its maximum capacity and throughput. And from that, you'll get 43,200 litres of bread. For the cakes, it is 192 cycles per month. Two litres of everything, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six products. So 12 litres of products in, you get 25 litres of cake out. So, because I think the base game version is a one-to-one -one when you add them all up. So, just nearly double, actually, no, sorry, just over doubled the amount, 12 to 25 in total. So yeah, what does that mean in terms of maximum throughput? So, at this ratio and rate, it is 384 years of each product a month, and that will get you 4,800 years of cake. So, I know I did do it for the flour and that, because it's all the same pretty much, but Let's go to our prices. Yeah, so go down here. So looking at the flour net, so flour ranges between nine hundred and twelve hundred and eighty-eight. Also, you can go to the cabin view cell station, which you'll need to forge your way through there because I uh, yeah, I seen in the map tour net that is a difficult place to get to. But yeah, so for the bread and that, so we're going with the normal prices. Let's say three and a half grand at its maximum price. So three and a half grand times four thousand oh, sorry, forty three hundred and forty three thousand two hundred years. That would get you just under a hundred and fifty two thousand and eight hundred. And that is just for one month and send that as peak price in December and that December or January and that. So do that over a course of 12 months, so theoretically in the year you can get 1.8 mil from the f flour and that, or flour into the bread, so yeah, not too shabby. And for the cakes, 6,987 at its peak price, and at 4,800 
you get a month for a month that is 33,537. And yep, times that by 12, doing it over the course of a year on its own. 402 grand, so you potentially get 402 grand a year from Kate to acquire other products, including greenhouses and that. Or just simply go with the overpowered bread production and get a crazy amount of money of 152 grand a month. So, yeah, I think I'll know what I would be doing if I was on this map playing, which I may do soon. But yeah, so again, I'm going to say again, overall now, because I'm doing chapters that keeps people skip. Yeah, this is an overpowered production and one I highly recommend. Actually, I've got two, four, six, eight P default bolt pallets and yeah, there are other mods like the large pallet or the large capacity mods and that. So now that you have 5,000 of your pallets and still be liftable, can't remember who that's by, but I may leave it down below or in the edit. But yeah, so that is the uh, bakery production. Next, we're going to head on to the spinnery. So at the spinnery, this is where you'll get your fabric from either wool or cotton. It only costs 60000 to buy. Again, as I mentioned before, these productions are relatively cheap in that, especially for the basic stuff in that. If you don't do all the fancy stuff, you just want to do a spinner in that, then by all means, crack on that. So, yeah, got four pallets spawned up already. Again, they're liftable in that, so nothing crazy in that, no weird fabric in that's been spawned in. And, yeah, so let's go into the trigger here in that, so... Got your usual inputs over here to your right for your cotton and wool, and as you can see, that's where your pads are going to be spawning. And yeah, so all your cards wool or cotton. Capacity for everything is a hundred thousand liters. Unfortunately, there's no like customized uh, clothing shop, but still, there are mods in that, or back a couple off, or more than a couple off, tier store sound. And you can get through all the fabric in a timely manner because, again, this is a fast production. So, for the wool, it is a 1 to 3 ratio 25 to 75 at 1400 cycles per month. So, again, for the maximum throughput and all that, that requires 36, yeah, 36,000 litres of wool, and that will get you 108,000 litres of fabric. And that is a lot of fabric makes you four liters of fabric and that's slightly less cycles per month so that will require 14,000 and 400 liters of cotton and that on its own will get you 57,000 and 600 liters of fabric and if you go into your prices for fabric send it at its peak price of 7,761 that will get you and staggering 838,188, that's just from fabric wool. For the additional of cotton, yeah, it's about half of that, so another 41,000 that. And just for the fabric wool and that, on its own, do that over a course of a year. That is, what, 10 a million you can earn that in the year, so... Yeah, if you're one of those all, I want to do a billionaire challenge in that. This is the map for you. But obviously you'll use this to get clothes and that, and if you do that, you will get more profit from that. And again, of course, there are mod ones like that does the fast production stuff of all this, so yeah, get I think it's the packet facility and that like all the base game stuff but overpowered in that a little bit. Yep, get one of those, put those down, or other production mods, and that, that lets you make clothes. I like the farm factory by Miss Umaton and that. And yeah, just whack those in and that would turn out very well indeed. So yeah, that is Spinnery. Again, it's a production I highly recommend you get in. Again, only costs 60 grand to buy, so what are you doing? Go and buy this if you're on this map. Next, we're going to head on to our dairy. So here we are at the dairy and this costs 70,000 to buy. Find it under build mode and that. And yep, as again, as I mentioned, this is extremely overpowered. And this is where you get your butter, cheese, and chocolate. So, 
we have a look here. So recipes for butter, cheese, and chocolate is all here. Your input is going to be over here. And your spawn area is just over here. So, yeah, we've got butter, butters, cheese, and chocolate. And again, these are distable pallets abled if you got the distable pallet mod by use modding. Bay mace, with that out of the way, let's go and have a look at the cycles per month. I could have gone the other way around, but regardless, so for the butter, it is a 1 to 2 ratio, 480 cycles per month. Not the most overpowered, I will admit, with this, but again, still does the job very well, and I still recommend this. For 70,000 to buy, so at the cycles and that per month, and the recipe in that. For its maximum throughput a month, that is 12,000 years of milk, and that will get you 24,000 years of butter. Also, I forgot to mention the capacities milk is 100,000 years, sugar is 36,000 years, and all your outgoing products is 10,000 years basically, or 9,999. Moving on to your cheese, again, a 1 to 2 ratio at 1200 cycles per month. So from that, that is 12 cheese. Now for your chocolate, it is a 1 to 10 ratio, pretty much. Actually, no, we're technically a 2 to 10 ratio, so one year of milk and sugar will get you 10 liters of chocolate at 2400 cycles per month. That will require 2400 liters of each product of milk and sugar, which is easy to achieve. And that on its own will get you 24,000 liters of chocolate. And yeah, I'm going to go over the prices for everything and just again showing some of the stuff. So, peak price at just under 2 grand for the butter. That is what, 45, 46,000 a month you can get for the cheese at 3,700 liters, or for, sorry, 3,700. That is what, 375, about 150, 140,000 or something like that a month. And then Nassi for the chocolate, so at its peak price, 4,300. You get 24,000 a month, so that's what, about 101 grand, I think. No, sorry, 105 grand. So, yeah, out of all these, cheese is the best one to do. And yeah, if you compare butter and cheese, if you had to choose one, I personally do the cheese. But if you've got enough milk now, because again, if you go to run all three of these productions, so 12, 24, and 2400 that is what 30 dairy empire then 38,000 years a month is reasonable in that but i think for the most like typical farmers and player in that maybe the chocolate that 2400 years a month is more realistic for a lot of people but yeah so anyways that is the dairy again 70,000 to buy and one that i recommend Next, we'll head on to the Cereal Factory. Moving on to the last of your base game modified productions, we've got the Cereal Factory, and yeah, this is again the more expensive of all, the, all we've looked at so far. This will cost 110,000 to buy, and yeah, Cereal Factory, so that will produce cereal. So, again, you get your four pallets here spawns. And they are liftable, and that's if you got the liftable pallets mod by use. Input is here. Trigger is here now for the production itself. So, cereal, turn it on. Terms with capacity that is 30,000 years for the honey and strawberry, 58,000 for the crops, and that's so that is the oats and corn. And yep. Yeah, your output capacity is 50,000 here, so we have a look here, so that is a 6 to 25, uh, no that can't be rounded down, but yeah, 6 to 25, not too bad, and yeah, unlike with the base game, you don't need, uh, what's it, raisins and that, I think it is, so yeah, don't have to do, deal with the grapes and that if you don't want to, and those are the most popular things to do in that, like with login, but if you do do it, then, and you're on this map, 
this is the production for you and one thing I will mention, not sure if I mentioned it earlier, I will be approaching Poor Boy. See if you can make some of these as like a mod pack and that something. I know he doesn't do mod packs and that on the mod hub and that. But yeah, this would be something nice to have in that. But at the end of the day, it's down to the mod and that. And all I can do is ask. But anywho, at 2160 cycles per month, through the after six years of honey and strawberry, which on its own, the strawberries, not too bad. The honey, maybe a bit more difficult than a few uh, bees and that. But there is a bunch of bees, I think it's like a thousand bees you can get from the red barn pack and that. I'm using on Raven Pour at the moment. And yeah, rather, rather than the 33 bees you get base game for your one beehive. I think the one I'm using is like 500 or a thousand bees or something like that. So yeah, pretty much I'll give that a little crack in that. But regardless, again, I'm diverting for your crops and that, so your oats and corn, that is 4,320 maximum you can throughput a month. And from all that, you get 54,000 litres of cereal, so that is a lot of shredded wheat, that is. Again, I should know it's corn and oats and that, so what cereal would it be? Technically, it'd be like separate cereals now, like corn flakes and that, maybe? Personally, I don't know that. Yeah, so what, turn that off. Yeah, I do like the noise who were in the way, so let's look at the prices a sec. So now we're going to our productions and that, so have a little look. Went the wrong way, so yep, yeah, zero we're looking at 5200 at its max price in February into March, so that is what, 260? thousand a month potentially so overall not too bad and again if you get that up to the cabin view self station that you can double that and just for reference yeah should do this early on but yeah on this map got all your cell points and that but the one up here cabin view self station there is no way of accessing this normally via a pickup in that so You'll need to like, forge your way through the hills and that. So, for example, as you head down to your normal firewood production, you'll need to certainly find a way to cut through, go up the hill and that. Again, this will probably take you what? Uh, depends on what you're doing with the logs itself and that, if you're chipping them and all that. Certainly an hour or two at least and that, if not more. So. Yeah, I just thought I'd mention that. That is your steel factory. 110 grand to buy, but it's actually, again, maximum output in that. You get a quarter of a mil in that, so you can double your money back in that. So, again, it's a production I recommend. So, yeah, that's, that is it for all of your base game like productions and that. Now, can we head on to the BGA and everything else? Now, we're at the BGA or biogas plant. And yeah, this is where everything starts upping up the ante a little bit. This does cost 1.18 mil to purchase. And yeah, just show you in productions and that. So yeah, we'll go across. This is a 500 kilowatt biogas plant. Again, a bit of a vast size in that, but you can do many things with this, so. Because, for example, with things like your methane and that, you can distribute that to other productions that requires it. I think there's some modded ones that does require methane. But anyways, without further getting ahead, so with the biogas plant, you can use grass, potatoes, silage, surrey, manure, sugar beet cuts, canola, sunflowers and all that. Along with the burning requirements like coal and crude oil to get this run in. And a little touch of waste oil and that is required to get used oil, i.e. propane. So yeah, on its own, you use the waste oil from your other productions, which we'll be looking at in a bit. Ship it over here. And yeah, boom, get propane. Turn it up to your production, things like the sawmill and that, that requires propane. But yeah, again, I didn't break down everything, but... I'll go over the general things, so terms with capacities first of all, so I should go to the BGA, just looking at my notes. 
the capacity are one and a half a million years of everything. And yeah, things like grass and that, so put a bit of grass in, get a bit of methane, get a bit of electricity. Along with that, you get some digest digestate. You double the amount of grass you put in and get as fuel in that, so diesel in that. That's very good to see. Along with some diesel exhaust fu fluid, again, not many things we've seen on FS22 and that. You no, know, like FS90, oh, it was. In terms with the options, I think it was, as a fuel type. But yeah, FS22 now, on console at least, absolute squat, I think. Maybe a mod or two and that, but apart from that, I don't know. And yeah, certain things with potatoes and that. But yeah, grass and potatoes has more for the diesel side of things. Your silage down to your corn is more for your electricity and even on its own digestate output because digestate with the sir yard will sell about a thousand for a thousand a year. So yeah, you can get a lot of money just from the digestate alone. So silage, 840 gets 756 electric, a little bit of methane 1 and 252 of digestate. Surrey, 200 in, get 180, 50 and 60. Manure, exactly the same. Sugar beet cut, 100 in, 90 electricity, 20 propane and 30 digestate. For your canola, you also get some death and diesel as a byproduct. 100 in, 756, 10, 252, 100 years of diesel and 30 years of diesel exhaust fluid. Sunflower, 100, 180, 20, 60, 110 and 30. Corn, 100, 180, 20, 60, 100 and 30. And yeah, I'm going through these not quickly in that, but yeah, again, I'll just repeat myself. And if you want to pause for anything I'm looking at, then feel free. Moving on to your wood chips, so buy products from your sawmill production and all that, and carpentry. Ideally, I'll save the wood chips for the plywood factory we'll look at later on, but you've got excess wood chips in that. Yeah, get a bit of propane and all that, propane electricity. On top of that, you do get a fair bit of kerosene and a diesel. And kerosene is the first thing we've looked at. I don't think this is used with other productions since this is a jet fuel in that, but kerosene again is jet fuel and does sell for a reasonable amount of commodity, which I've broken down in a bit. So, and on top of that, you can get more. Um, was it kerosene from coal? So coal in, 150 liters of kerosene, a little bit of diesel, 25 liters, and a little bit of propane, 75 liters. So, 100 to the crude oil that you'll put in, you can use that to get some diesel, kerosene, and propane. And from your waste oil from some of your other productions, productions we'll be looking at in a bit. Don't mean to jump ahead there. Yeah, just whack that in and as and when you want to, cycle it through. But yeah, again, if you look at the ratios, that they, not ratios, inputs and that, 100, 250 and that. And you're looking at 24 cycles per month. Again, the root crops is going to be a bit more than that because you get more volume from it. Yeah, 2,400 and that. And what I've gone done is I've broken down two items, so wood chip fuel and the kerosene from the coal in that so for your wood chips and that or I call chip fuel in my notes 4,800 years of wood chips in very easy to achieve that you cut one tree down boom as long as the, one of these large trees you'll be golden in that because there's at least 5, 10 or 50,000 no, sorry 5, 10 or 20,000 years of wood chips you can get and from that you'll get 6,000 years of propane 24,000 years of diesel and 7,200 years of kerosene. And speaking of the kerosene itself, for this particular recipe and that, again, 4,800 years of coal. And from that, you get 3,600 years of propane, 7,200 years of kerosene, and 1,200 years of diesel. So, 1,200 years of diesel, that'll fill up a K9250 combine harvester after about two hours of use but again yeah it's not the highest of most overpowering that's like 
again, this ain't crazy overpowered in that, but it's one of things, whack your items in, and it'll just churn through it over time in that. And really, that's what you'll need in the biogas plant, really. Again, there are BJ to the planet ET, modular BGs and that, that can get you crazy amounts, like on my survival challenge series, I was getting millions a month. Again, I was getting a bit overpowered on that, over crazy in that. But yeah, for something, just buy products or waste you don't use in that. Just whack them in, turn them over, not too complicated recipes. Especially if you want to do a bit of a cow empire, shit ton of money from that. But yeah, so have a little tour of the BGA. So yeah, your input is over here. And that is for pretty much everything that ain't liquid. Excuse me there, sorry, that was a little burp I had. So yeah, all your sauce off goes in here. Your liquid, so like you're serving that, will go into here. Your output for your digestible that is here. And also there is another outlet here. I shouldn't have a quick look at that because I do have some testing equipment to show you so. If not you own the John Deere. With the John Deere here, so just show you what you can get from your outlet. So for this one here. Get your propane, diesel, exhaust fluid, diesel, kerosene, and digestate. And if you move over here, actually, oh no, that's input, sorry, that's your other input. Four for a sec there, that was an outlet. Oh no, it is an outlet, sorry, what am I fucking talking about? But yeah, again, same outlet snap, so nothing different about that. Just again, there's two different options depending on how you want to place your BJ in that. Typically, this is what you'll see at the front, but at least the map in that, poor boy and Bruce in that, has that you've had the option for a side outlet, so. Well, yeah, overall, not too bad. Decent level of detail, and again, I think this is pretty much a base game asset, so if you look into our productions. So, yeah, it's literally the base game assets, but ooh, a lot better, hell of a lot better than that, because again, get all your extra new types of that, of kerosene, death and that, so again, another one that I highly recommend, so yeah, that is the BGA Biogas Plant 500 kilowatt. next we head on to our grain dryer, on to this side, we've got your grain dryer, and this is a very cheap production to have, it only costs a hundred grand. So yeah, your input is here. And we have a look, so that requires propane, corn and soybeans. And from that, dry it, and you can get dry corn and dry beans. And in terms with what you lose in that, you lose... So 250 in, get 200 out, so... What's that in? I meant 20%, so... We'll look at the cost for that and see if it's actually worth it. But yeah, actually, I'm interested in that. So, yeah, 250 litres of corn, 100 litres of <laughs> propane. That'll get you 200 litres of dry corn and 25 litres of compost. And this is the same for the dry beans. So, for the maximum possible throughput. Now, again, it's a bit more, less realistic, especially with soybeans, unless you're doing mega harvests and that, with mega fields and that. Which is possible, and it's about to get 600,000 litres in one harvest, but I digress. That is 600,000 litres in of either corn or soybeans, 240,000 litres of propane, and from that you get 480,000 litres of your dried crop of whether it's corn and beans, and 60,000 litres of compost. So we have a look at the sub prices. So Looking at corn and soybeans, so corn, let's say 850 max sell price, soybeans 2100. So we're losing 20%, but I think it's going to be worth the output. Like compost alone on its own, 361 doesn't bulge that too much. And again, it's a side product in that, so if you're doing one of these at maximum output in that. That's what, like 20,000 you can get a month for that, or 23,000, I think. 
But yeah, you don't really want the compost and that. You'll be wanting the uh, dry beans and that. And yeah, having a look here. So corn on its own, that is 1,050. Again, not much slow volume. So unlike with corn normally, it dries within a month. And that's what I mean by the production's being overpowered. Harvest your corn, especially with seasons and that on. It's going to be worth, literally at its worst price at harvest time. So whack this into the dryer and that, and boom. Instant profit in that, so that's something you got to be considering. And the dry beans, you are losing a bit more in that, so 2,100 for the soybeans and that, as a crop itself. And 1,700 for dry beans, so again, a bit of a more of a harsher impact. But going back up, there are massive fluctuations with the products and that, so just looking at the soybeans on its own, first of all. When you're harvesting it around November, December, and October, November, and that, it's worth barely a thousand, not two thousand. So, again, this is where it comes in, and that the overpoweredness. So, again, depends on your place on that, how you want to proceed with this. But yeah, a hundred thousand to purchase that. You'll find this under your factories and that, as with everything, of course. Again, I mention these for the people who are only looking at individual chapters and that, so please bear with me while I'm repeating myself in that. Now that's your feed production. So many fucking productions in that. There we go, green dryer. Not too bad to place in that, all things considering. And again, you can use pretty much any tree in that that accepts a multi crop field type in that. So just try over here in that. That's going to be your input now. I ignored it initially, but I'll have a quick look now. But yeah, so dry corn, compost, and dry beans. So yeah, overall not too bad. And just looking at cell points and that for the dry corn and beans. So just down here, have a little look. And yeah, pretty much sell all that. Mobile self station or sell everything by Schultz Modding or Windmill Sell All. So, got three options there Sell All, Windmill Sell All, the Mobile Sell Station. Now, what I don't have is the Sell Container enabled. But again, if Sell Point accepts multi crop field types and that, then there's a good chance they accept these and that. But again, that depends on to the mod you're using. But yeah, whenever in doubt. The mobile cell station that as part of the mobile utilities pack. So everything by Schultz Modding. Or just use one here now that's being contributed by Schultz himself, so overall not too bad. And it is a production I highly recommend. Again, if you've got a bit of corn that you don't produce silage in that. Don't know why you wouldn't usually, but again with these productions, maybe a reason why not to do make silage all the time when you're doing corn that. But regardless, that is the green dryer. Next, we'll be heading on to the root crop processing plant. The root crop processing plant, only 70,000 here to buy, and this is a combination of all the productions you'll get with the premium expansion. So, if we go into our build mode initially, so go to your productions, that. Go to your premium expansion. So, this is a soup factory combined with a preserved food factory, combined with a potato processing plant, and all of these on its own. What's that? 300, 350, 365,000 to buy for all of these, and for like a fifth of that, 70 grand. Get just get this. That's what I would do. So yeah, let's go over here and that. So input at the front and that. Trigger is just here. And yeah, from this, get your soups. You don't get combined soup, but to be honest, what you're using from combined soup is making through output in everything else and the ability, ability to do other stuff with just one production rather than three. Especially with, what was it, a 50 production limit, I think it is, or 40 production limit. Which I have hit during testing this and setting this up. But yeah, so for example, with soups and that, so 
First of all, let's just go over capacity. So, all of your input stuff is 300,000 litres, and your output capacity for everything is 75,000 litres. And also, with this, you're able to get sugar naps, so not too bad thing to have, weirdly. But yeah, sugar, I don't think that's required in any of these recipes, but it's a good thing to have in that. So, looking at things like your sh soups and that, all pretty much the same in that. Just with different cycles per month in that. Again, depends on what you're using in that. Personally, yeah, I think carrots would be the one to do. I think you get slightly more carrots in that. Yeah, you get more carrot soup in that a month than anything else on its own. Also, from that, you get preserved foods in that. Again, a 5 to 4 ratio in that. On top of that, you get your crisp from your oil. So, that is sunflower, canola, and corn oil. So, we'll look at the oil meal next. So, feel free to skip to that. If we look at the corn oil first of all. But, regardless, so... Yeah, again, not too bad. And the ability to use corn oil is a nice touch. And that's the you get from, or you actually call them. Here in the UK, we call these crisp and that, not potato chips. That's almost like French fries for us, that is, here in the UK. But, again, cultural ex exchange <laughs> tangent on side and that. Let's go with the rough estimates and that. So... Again, too much to break down individually in that. So, for the things like here, like your soups and that, at 1200 cycles per month, you'll get, sorry, you'll need 60,000 as an input and 48,000 years out. So, for your parsnip and potato soup, that's fair enough, makes sense in that. And again, this applies to your preserved foods as well, not the chips that we look at separately. So, since we went over the scenario for 1200 cycles per month, again, double or half for your potatoes, not your potatoes, your soup and preserved stuff, as and where it's required in that. For your potato chips, on the other hand, it requires always exactly the same, just different recipes in that for the oil in that. 60,000 litres of potato, 120,000 litres of oil, and 30,000 litres of carton roll, which on its own, may seem much in that with your normal platinum expansion, but again, this is overpowered productions and that, so I'll have time to that bit down below in that to get paper and carton roll, but for now, we'll just gloss over that. And from that, you get 120,000 years off crisp a month. And yeah, just going over to sub prices your crisp and that again not much variation in the price in that 2700 120,000 liters in that a month potentially in that for crisp on its own that is a lot of money like was it 320,000 i think it's roughly I haven't done the math that's just rough math in my head in that but yeah not too bad at all and look at that stuff that, yeah, triple soup, we don't do that. But yeah, all your soups that are relatively similar in prices and that, so... Yeah, even potato soup, no, potato soup is worth slightly bit more than that, but... That's peak price, but apart from that, not too shabby. I'm back into your productions and that. Personally, if you had to do one soup and that, or one crop and that, do carrots and that. Yeah, better ratios than that, so by all means, crack on with that. And lastly, your sugar in that, so 240 cycles per month in that. 50, 25 to a 75. And your maximum output per month is 6,000 litres of carton roll, 12,000 litres of sugar beet, and from that, 18,000 litres of sugar, so... Yeah, I think this is maybe the less overpowered, more similar to base game stuff in that. But again, plenty of other sugar production mods, including the Cookie Factory, which has an option for normal sugar production at a decent rate, or the overpowered cheatiness to match the vibe here in that. But again, again, there's a little thing to note in that and mention in case you're thrown off by this. But yeah, overall, not too bad. So, inputs here, pad spawn is here in that. Uh, yeah, 70000 to buy that. An absolute bargain of a price in that, to be honest. 
have you hop into here now, so we'll get some of this out. I know they can't sorry, you didn't get out loose. And that's the input material over there, but yeah, potato chips and that. And nothing else spawning, but again these aren't this bonus, you got the premium uh this will pilot mod and that bar use modding, but apart from that, not too bad, not much else to say in that. So that is the root crop processing. Next we we'll head on to the oil mill. Here we are at the oil mill. The price is a little bit rich here, 150,000 to buy in that, but again, as I mentioned with the other ones, if you're following along, it is worth it. So purchasing that point is here now, if you go to this normally. Input material is over here, and pallet spawn is over here. So yeah, let's go over here now. So yeah, with the oil mill Nat, you can get sunflower canoe and olive oil as normal. At more of a speedier and better ratios than that. On top of that, you can get corn oil from your corn and lavender oil from your lavender. So not too bad actually in that. And yeah, going over the capacities in that, 250,000 liter is capacity of all the types in that. And if you have a look, the recipe and cycles are all exactly the same. So for your maximum output for any one of these, just insert X oil oil. It requires 480,000 liters of the crop type in. So sunflower canola, whatever it is. And from that, you get 360,000 years of oil and 120,000 years of waste oil. So, again, this is one of those productions where I think most people will struggle to achieve that. Maybe corn oil is achievable in that. And after I have tested that, I'll do a separate video on that on Navador and that because I'm interested in Navador just as a general concept itself in that. Be interesting to look at. But yeah, if you go to your prices and that, so we scoot up a bit. So I'm going to look at lavender and corn oil. So lavender oil, a bit more of a fluctuation, 3,400. And yeah, if you get 360,000 liters a month, now yeah, that's well into the millions and that. But realistically, you're going to be able to achieve that and that. But yeah, for 1,000 liters, 3,400, not too bad. Uh, if we have a look at corn oil, that is 3,000, and again, peaks at a different time, I think, yeah, May, June. In comparison, lavender oil is February and March it peaks, so, again, diversifying that, sell your products at different times of the year. And compare that to sunflower and that, look at the averages in that, 4,000. 3700 and 5400 but they're the more difficult ones to get so the prices does reflect that so again one thing to note to consider that but yeah so apart from that let's look at the output palette so so let me just go to the production sec so I want to have a look so if I turn these on to distribute in the weather so yeah I want to spawn waste oil if we can and corn oil unfortunately waste oil does not spawn but corn oil does and corn oil weighs a bit more than actually one and a half tons compared to 0 0.95 tons so again nothing to know that but any decent uh forklift now could be able to lift this i think with some relative ease but again feel free to use a tractor or a take hander as you wish but yeah, again, cracking the production facility, and one is again where I've mentioned, it's not so much you can constantly do the maximum output in that a month. It's one is where if you just whack something in, get done in that month and that, and sell at the end of the day, or for a sudden and breaking demand in that, then by all means, purchase this and yeah, cost 150 grand. Can't remember if I showed off in build mode in that, but. I'll quickly show off now, so here it is. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention there is no colour options with most of these to note. 
But yeah, I think a couple of ideas merged into one that, a couple of silos and that. But yeah, I like the redness and that. I do like how it just looks and that. It looks very good and that. But yeah, I just like as the tanks as a sort of idea and that. But yeah, your fill point, or sorry, your input is here. Now, I can't forgot to mention that. If I have, I do apologize. But yeah, so that is the oil mill. On to the carpentry tree, and this is one that is, I think it's the most overpowered in that, and the, the one that can potentially drive you mad, as it has driven me mad with testing this. But yeah, this combines a lot of the productions you get with the platinum expansion, all into one, and the assets used is the base game carpentry, with a shed in that, so... This costs 150,000, like with the oil bill we just looked at. Yeah, we'll find it on build mode, under productions and that. And we'll scoot across until we find it. 150,000 buying that again. No changes in colors and that. But yeah, your wood fill point, or wood input, sorry, is here now, along with your other materials. And your purchase point when you come across this around the map is just around this corner here. And from here, there are 29, 29, 29 different recipes. So, get all your barrel stuff and that, get your armoires, chairs, tables and that, floor tiles with different fill type materials so you can have plywood. Dry lumber, planks, long planks and that, so we have a look here. Got all of this stuff, all your birdhouses and that. And just for the sake of comparison, into build mode, again, 150,000 this costs. We go into the platinum expansion, so... So first of all, Nat, if we have a look, again, sex, so... Barrels, dust, and chairs, and well, all that's anything from the platinum expansion. So, forget about the. Actually, no, yeah, sawmill for the platinum expansion on its own. 56 grand, so from that, you can get prefabricated walls and that. Then, with the wood turn that, you get your shingles, bowls, and stair railings. 80 grand. I get your wood curtains now, whatever it is, for, no sorry, shingles and that, from the shingle factory. Art accessory, 50 grand on its own. Pet accessories, 80 grand. And that is it, so... All that, 80, 160, 200, 256... About, yeah, 256 grand compared to 150 grand. And all of it crammed into one production. And that, again, overpowered and that to a certain degree. At least with the ability to use other stuff in that, so... You don't have to just do planks and long planks and wood beams and that. You can potentially use plywood, which I'll discuss in a sec with my notes I've looked at. But yeah, just one point for everything is here on that. And if you're familiar with the Platinum Expansion, good ones to do is the prefabricated walls, Four tiles and that, tables and that, because they're very easy to move and that. Your armoires or your wardrobes and that. Because, yeah, they are very stackable. Not with the barrels and that, I think, personally. But, yeah, things like the bathtubs and stairs, and I always had issues stacking and that. But, anyway, that is only used for one thing, and that is your floor tiles. And if you compare it to just floor tiles, planks, and dry lumber and that same or more cycles cycles per month again dry number and that a bit makes more sense that compared to just normal planks which you get normally and very easily as we look at the field type so yeah percent 1000 compared to a million liter capacity and yeah again I forgot to mention capacities is a million liters and that so that's for your inputs and that is also the same for your output materials but yeah, back onto the floor tiles. A bit more plywood is required than that, but you can get potentially more done per month than that. So add the two plywood, I'll do more. And as you can see, 
is a lot more easier to get play with than dry lumber. Personally, I'll save the dry lumber for other productions and that, so... Again, that's my personal opinion. Your opinion may vary, and again, that's perfectly fine. So, just for the sake of not doing the same thing or breaking down every 29 production that, I've broken down a fair few of these, and this was giving you the general vibe and idea. So, first of all, with I'm using the long plank, so we've got things like the doghouse, cat house, and that, bird house, and that, picture frames, and easel, and that, on shingles, and that, and steam staircase railings, and that. But what I've broken down is picture frames and doghouse. So these two here. Now I'll give you the general maximum vibe. So yeah, maybe a little bit less of certain material outputs for the others. But again, this just gives you the ballpark range and that. Whilst keeping this short and informative and that. So four picture frames on its own. 84 to 210 and 50. So 84 long planks gets you 210 litres of picture frames and some sawdust that can be used for other productions or sell. Again, depends on you and what you want to do. And from that, your maximum output is, potential is 5,000 litres, 5,004 litres of long planks in, which is very easy to achieve. And from that, you get 12,600 litres of picture frame add 3,000 litres of sawdust for your doghouse, slightly more than that, so 5,400 litres of doghouse oh, sorry, 5,400 litres of long planks yeah, 5,700 litres of long planks to the dog houses, so that requires 5,400 litres of long planks and from that you get 5,700 litres of doghouse and 3,000 litres of sawdust and just to vague over the prices of some of these items, so just the doghouse and that we just looked at. They are worth quite a bit. So doghouse is five thousand, so twenty five grand a month. Well, yeah, not the most overpowered than that. And so yeah, that's doghouses. Picture frames, so that is just down here. A bit less than that. So personally I'll go with the doghouse now, but Again, this gives you options and that. But heck it, if you don't want to sell these and you want to get some trash cans and that, then set these to distribution, along with the root crop processing and st stuff and that. Send it over and that you get your trash cans and garbage containers. But that will be looked at at the end. That'll be one of the last ones I'll be looking at. But yeah, so next we'll go into things like your items like your barrels, where they only require long planks and dry lumber as an input. Dry lumber is twice as productive as long planks. So, for example, I've tested the barrels. So, have a look at the barrels up here. So, this requires long planks and metal, 5025. And that will get you 340 years of barrels and 50 years. That is 2,400 years of barrels and 3,000 years of sawdust you can get. And all that requires is 3,000 years of long planks and 1,500 years of metal. So, yeah, mainly your capacity, but doesn't require too much. However, going on to a different recipe where it requires dry lumber. So, Again, this is where I personally recommend using dry lumber. 50, 25 and that. 120 cycles per month. In comparison to 60. So this is double. So whether it is, it's double. So that is 40,800 litres of barrels you can get. And yeah, again, this is what I'm on about. But last thing I want to test is the floor tiles. So we're testing planks dry lumber and plywood. Just do a fair comparison that. So in terms with input materials for all three, it is 8,400 years of planks. For your plywood it is 24,000 years. And for your dry lumber it is 18,000 years. And um, for both your floor, floor, floor tiles, plywood and your dry lumber floor tiles 
whatever input you've had it is a double out so a one to two ratio as you can see so 18,000 euros of dry lumber gets you 36,000 euros of floor tiles and plywood is 24 out and for your planks now again these are the cheapest ones you can do and the easiest ones to do hence why it's not a one to two ratio but regardless 8,400 euros of planks gets you 10,800 euros of floor tiles a month maximum potentially top off 3,000 euros of sawdust the next moving down we're going to test the armoire or your cupboards and that so I'm going to be testing planks and dry lumber so got your dry lumber here 75 25 so it's a 1 to 2 ratio at 120 cycles per month and compare that to where it says armoire plywood but that is dry, the same one dry lumber and that again this is all things like these I've noticed now which I'll go mention to poor boy modding but going to the actual armoire so the one that requires planks that is double so as I mentioned dry lumber is twice as effective as planks so just looking at planks itself that is 4,500 liters of planks potentially required for maximum throughput 1,500 liters of metal and from that you get 9,960 years or say 10,000 of armoires a month and 3,000 years of sawdust so with the dry number you get 18,000 years a month and 6,000 years of sawdust so yeah that's the one I prefer in that so if I got dry number in that I'll use that, that don't have to use again it says plywood in that uh, I keep some confusing me that does well, yeah, actually, no, sorry. Actually, yeah, something soon does require dry lumber and that. But again, depends on what you want to go with, depends on what you want to choose with. Personally, if it's got long planks or dry lumber, I personally recommend going for. But at the end of the day, it's down to you in choosing that. So, yeah, difference is double that. And in terms of the comparison of input for lumber and your planks, yeah, the input is twice the double. So double the capacity. So yeah, overall dry lumber is the best. That is from what I've done in testing that. But just compare the differences between planks and dry lumber one more time in that. In terms with inputs now, you're looking at double the input of materials for lumber and that, dry lumber versus planks. And from that you get a 8.72% 8, 8 more of an output in that. So again it depends on what you prefer in that cycles per month and that and how much you're producing from the sawmill and that again i could give you all the best in that but at the end of the day whatever you're producing from the sawmill is what you're able to use at the carpentry and uh, you need to turn that sawmill constantly to have all of these running at once if you wish but yeah so that's took a couple of takes to do that but apart from that that is the carpentry done. Next, we're going to head on to the firewood production, which is just over there. With the sawdust in that, you'll need to set that to distribute in or sell. Otherwise, you ain't going to be able to use it because it doesn't spool as a pallet or anything. And if you have a look, there is no fill, yeah, fill trigger in that. So, just a thing to know in that. But yep, on to the firewood production now. So if you want something cheap and cheerful, the firewood production is just for you at costing only a mere 5,000 to buy. And from that, you can get firewood and that's from wood. So going to here now, it's a very easy production. That is literally wood in, firewood out is a one to two ratio. So what it does in theory in that gets your logs in like these cut some wool that chops them up put onto neat pads to be used for a nice good old log burner or other stuff oh uh, yeah it actually looks very good in that how it's all done that for the firewood and that very impressive in that so but yeah so back onto this terms with capacities and that 200,000 
liters and 50,000 liters respectively. So 200,000 liters of wood and 50,000 liters of firewood. You can't distribute that, it is what it is, there's no further production for it. And yeah, to place this down also, forgot to mention, sorry of this, so 5,000 to buy, as I've already mentioned that. Uh, if we go across somewhere, we'll find it. Amongst all these productions, yeah, there it is, 5,000. Very easy in that, and also very small to place in that, so doesn't require a huge area. And can maximum spawn of two pallets at a time. Now for the theoretical maximum output per month, which on its own, now, without anything else, I do think is achievable for a reasonable player in that. That requires 120,000 liters of wood, which is, again, very easy to achieve in that. And from there you get 240,000 liters of firewood a month, so that will fill up within a matter of a couple of hours. But yeah, with that fear it's called 50,000 in that. If we go to our firewood in that. We have a look. 7,300 on average. Again, if you have to get to cabin view in that, gets up for 13, 14,000. But at 7,000 in that for a thousand years, that is what? Just over 350 grand on its own a month? With the potential of being 700 grand a month. Hey, just mention that. And that's only for just a production that costs five grand. You'll make your money back in no time. Even if you said sell sell manually now, sell automatically. And so it gets a 20, 30 percent cut, whatever it is, depending on what economy sense you're on. It is definitely worth it in that. I mean, what are you kidding, and just for comparison, is a two to one at seven thousand years for that. Just for the logs on its own. Again, this does make sense in the real world and that. At most you're looking at two thousand. So yeah. This is a very, very overpowered production. I highly recommend. Definitely worth doing that. And for five grand as an entry point. What are you waiting for? Crack get on with this. But yeah, another little quick, cheap and cheerful, easy production. Now on to something a bit more complicated and vast to deal with. So that is the recycling center. And this is 150,000 to buy. And you got different res recipes for corn, slag, trash cans and garbage containers. Obviously, I'll show these later on when I go with the other recycling plant and that. But regardless, with all of these different input materials, from these you can get junk dozers, junk cars, junk loaders, junk tanks and junk trains with a waste oil as a byproduct. So use it for your other productions like your used oil production at. But yeah, so in terms of capacities, all of the capacities are 500,000 liters at the moment. And in terms with the output and throughput at the maximum possibility a month. So for corn, we're looking at a 2,400 cycles per month. A thousand corn in, you get a hundred of each of the junk items. And 200 liters of the waste oil. So that means maximum throughput is 2.4 million liters of corn. And from that, you get 240,000 years of each of these products out, along with 480,000 years of waste oil for the slag, 240,000 years in, so it is 1,200 cycles per month, and the slight different ratios in that, so 200 slag gets you 10, 20, 40, yeah, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, a respectable I'm assuming it's dozers, cars, loaders, tanks, and trains in that order. Of course, icons don't really make that clear enough, but that's my assumption. Along with 100 years of waste oil. So, yeah, the maximum throughput is 240,000 years in. From that, you can get 12,000 12, years of dozers, 24,000 years of cars, 36,000 years of loaders, 
48,000 years old tanks, 60,000 years old trains, and 120,000 years of waste oil. But I think that could easily be the other way around from trains to cars. And yeah, with the trash can and garbage containers, I'll show just show them at the end. But for the throughput, it is both very similar now. Actually, yeah, they're pretty much exactly the same almost. But yeah, trash cans, the maximum throughput with 600 cycles per month, 250 trash cans, and you get 30, 40, 35, 25, and 20 liters of the junk items, and 100 liters of the waste oil. And from that, the maximum throughput, which I will say now, you won't be able to achieve this because the production you get, the garbage cans, our garbage containers and trash cans, aren't the fastest of production, so you can't purchase more of these. But theoretically speaking, you can put 600,000 years in, and from that, you get, sorry, 150,000 years in, you get 18,000 years of dozers, 24,000 years of cars. 21,000 years of loaders, 15,000 years of tanks, 12,000 years of train, and 60,000 years of waste oil. And then lastly, for the garbage containers at 1200 cycles per month, recipes is 500 in for the garbage containers, and it is 25, 20, 35, and 40 out for the junk items, and 100 for the waste oil. So yeah, the Theoretical throughput is 600,000 years of garbage containers. From that, you get 3,000 years of dozers, 24,000 years of 20,000 years of waste oil. And yeah, from here, you can set these to distributing or store that. So yeah, the waste oil, that will go to your crude oil production that, which we looked at earlier. But yeah, so actually, let's look at the items, because... I was very surprised when these spawned, so you got your junk loader, a thousand years weighs six tons, your junk car, a thousand years weighs one point six tons, got your dozers, one thousand years at six tons, your tank, two and a half tons, one thousand years, and then lastly, you actually get a train, which I was very surprised. And these are 5,000 years and weigh a staggering 10 tons. So, I think for the most part, that with like 10 handers and that, and some wheel, wheel loaders, I think you're able to lift like, a lot of these items, especially with a weight on the back. So, for example, let's go to a 10 hander and that. These weighs 12 and a half tons. I should do for that one. I usually go with like a JCB. New Holland, Demantos, Colossus, and that. Or even some of like the fair skins and that I'll make you with. But yeah, these weigh like 8 tons and that, so you're going to need a lot of weight on the back. Of course, base game wise, there are no weights that support these. I'm not sure if I've got them installed, but. No, I haven't. But for weights and that, you got the Lizard Lightweight or the Lizard PW Weights. They are very good for tight handers and that, and wheel losers and anything else that has a like a little hitch on the back and that. Just however, for the most people, I think a wheel loader is more of an ideal one. So again, the lower ends ones I may not recommend. I think really you got to go with the heavier ones like the Clash Torians and that, or with the like Platinum expansion. Any of these two. I've got the Volvo L180 as a demonstration, so on top of that I've got the CSE pack and that, so that's got the straps and that, so yeah, in theoretically you can get these loaded up, and then yeah, Bob's your uncle, the job's are good, and so actually for that, so your input is here. These black marks are your outputs for your junk material. And for your oil in that, the output is here, which I'll show in a sec. But so yeah, for now, six tons this way. So, trap it, lift it up, and yep, yeah, see, relatively easy in that. And actually, let's test this with a telehander. See, what's the limit without any weights whatsoever? 
go. I've got the new Holland tank hander here, so this weighs like 8.1 tons. So the car out weighs 1.6 tons, should be able to lift this. Also, for most of these, besides from the train, you can use pallet forks. It will be able to go under and that, but it is quite iffy. So yeah, 1.6 tons, not too bad. Yeah, if I go a bit crazy. Yeah, it's not too bad, so that, that you can do. Yeah, six tons, and was that two and a half tons? So let's move on to the second heaviest item. So that's the dozers and the loaders and that, whatever it is. So yeah, six tons. Remember, this weighs eight tons, and yeah, see, we are tipping, so you will need a weight for this. But for the two and a half tons of tank, this should be able to lift with some relatively ease. Yeah, not too bad. So yeah, if you just got a tail hander in that, besides from the dozers and loaders, you can do pretty much anything. So actually, let's skip those. And I'm going to go straight to the train. So. This weighs 10 tons, this is like 29 tons, or whatever it is. So yeah, this will have a little bit of a problem lifting, but overall's not too bad, so... Yeah, go crazy, you will tip this a little bit, so... Just be a bit careful on that. And what I'll do is just show what you can do is sell these off and that, so... Go to our sell point. Whack one of these down. I sell 5,000 years of train. So there we go. Boom. And for that, you get 22,000 for a train. So overall, it's not too bad in that. If you're ready to clean that, what you can get. And looking at the prices of these, so you'll feel, find these under your prices and that. Just go down a little bit. So we've got your junk car net. That is 2,700. And again, with a lot of these prices, they are, yeah, see the fluctuations, but if you look at the actual mint and max, it's only a 40 pound bucks, euros, whatever your currency you're using of a difference. So really, you can sell these any time, whenever you want. But yeah, junk cars, 2,700. For your dozers, four and a half grand. Same with the loaders, your tanks is four and a half grand, and your trains is also four and a half grand. So, all of these are relatively good, but per single item, of course, these are a thousand liters, that is five thousand liters. So, just a little thing to bear in mind. But, yeah, now to show the extraction of the waste oil. our tanker here. So yeah, let's just go over here, just show what I'm on about. So I'll open the help menu, fill, and yeah, Bob's your uncle, fill up with waste oil. And just to confirm, because yeah, a bit of a breaking recording, so we can use these at the oil mill, right? So yeah, waste oil in, get your propane that, so I get a fair amount of waste oil from that, so if you just want waste oil now, go with this now again. 150 grand to purchase now. But what you fear I can go through in a month now is definitely worth it. And we'll talk about a little bit more about this later on in terms with what the realistic throughput is at the end when I go with the other recycling process and plan, just because that's on a different save file. And I'll have to go back and forth in between our saves at the moment because it takes a little bit to load in that. But anyway, so that is the recycling center. Next, we're going to move on to the plywood production over here. And this is 175,000 to buy. And so, yeah, let's go into here. All it needs is wood chips and yet yeah, plywood. 500 in, 150 out, 600 cycles per month. 
the capacity is a million liters each, and that covers 300,000 liters of wood chips, which is the maximum throughput in a month, is quite easy to obtain that, especially with like the devourer and that. Chop the trees down now, and again, Bob's your uncle, you got a lot of wood chips and that. But yeah, 300,000 years in, and from that you get 90,000 years out. And you can use this with a lot of productions, like making the, was it floor tiles with the carpentry and that? Yeah, floor tiles with carpentry. And yeah, so I'll show that in build mode, so under productions, and I'll quickly show the recycling process and plant, because I forgot to show that. So yeah, your recycling process and plant or recycling center, sorry, is here. But yeah, your plywood production is here. It is quite a bit of a long boy. So, a little thing to note. But yeah, your output is here. And as you can see, you spawn up to four pallets at a time. And your input for your wood chips is on this other side over here. So, but yeah, overall, not too bad. A little bit of a little production. These plywood weighs 1.1 tons each. But yeah, it's getting cracking little production that. And if we go into our prices and that, so your plywood and that, 900 for a thousand liters. So 90,000 a month. What's that? A hundred? No, 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 not not a hundred grand. Sorry, about 81 grand a month you can earn. So. Within two and a bit months, this is profitable, so like, very achievable, very realistic to achieve, so again, this is a production I will buy. So yeah, that is the plywood production. Next, we'll head over to the smelter. So, here we are at the smelter. This is 110,000 to buy. And yeah, first of all, this is model from the cereal factory, just with some colour adjustments. And one of the chests you can get as part of the base game stuff. But yeah, so your outputs are here, which we'll look at in a sec. Your input is here. Very easy to achieve in that. And your trigger point is here to enter the production. And from here, you can make metals, drums, nails, gold bars, pipes, metals, nails, or just everything. So, look we'll over everything in sec. So yeah, you get metals, zag, drum oil, nails, gold bars, and pipes as your outgoing products. Your income products are the junk items, the trash cans, the plywood, gold, coal, and iron ore. So yeah, to get metal in that, so this is the easier one of the two, and this is faster than the one you get with the Platinum Expansion. And all it requires is a little bit of coal and a bit of iron ore. At 480 cycles per month, the recipe is 400 litres of iron ore, 300 litres of coal, and from that you get 1,000 litres of metal, uh, 100 litres of zag, and 100 litres of drum barrels. And the maximum throughput for this is 190,000 years of ore, 144,000 years of coal, and from that you can get 480,000 years of metal, 48,000 years of zag, and barrels out. Also, before going further, I forgot to mention the capacities in that, and for your input, it is a million years of coal, so you can see that just here. For everything else, it is 200 and 50,000 layers, and similar to your output, your metal is also a linear capacity, and everything else is 250,000 layer capacity. And yeah, theoretically, it does take a month or two potentially to fill these up, but if you're using these for your other productions, then I wouldn't have to worry too much about that. But anyway, so that is one metal. The other metal does require the trash cans, and again, I think it's very similar, 4, 300, 1000, 100, 100. A little bit similar in that, just minor adjustments, but at 408 cycles per month, the recipe is 500 litres of trash cans, 
300 years of coal, and from that you can get 1,000 years of metal, 100 years of slag, but no drum barrels. So your theoretical output for this is 240,000 years of trash cans, and 144,000 years of coal in, and from that you can get 480,000 years of metal, and 40,000 years of slag. And this is also exactly the same as the one with the nails. All the difference is swap the metal for the nails. Moving on to your barrels, so your drum barrels. Very simple, just requires iron ore, and from that you can get a bit of slag and your drum barrels. At 480 cycles per month, the maximum throughput is 192,000 years of ore in. And from that, you get 48,000 years of slag and 240,000 years of barrels. Moving on to your gold bars next. This is the one I'm actually enjoying that. And also, after I've gone through everything, I will show all of the items afterwards and that. But I'm going to go through the recipes and that first of all. But regardless, with your gold bars, that requires gold dust and that on its own. Like uh, chunks of gold, little bits of gold, and now like your. Well, if you need you know, like watch gold rush and that, you get the little gold bits and that gets smelted down. But regardless of that, 480 cycles per month, and this requires a 500 years of gold, 250 years of coal, and 200 years of plywood to put the gold bars into the box when it comes out. And from that, you get 250 years of gold and 100 years of slag. And your maximum throughput with all this is 240,000 years of gold in, along with 120,000 years of coal, and 96,000 years of plywood. From that, you get 120,000 years of gold bars and 48,000 years of slag out. And then lastly, the pipes. Are, did we already go over that? For, yeah, I think we already did. Actually, no, we didn't. Sorry. Yeah, so at 480 cycles per month for your pipes. Again, very similar to, what was it, the drum barrels. Just requires iron ore now, and this is a very easy one to do. And one, if I had to do one of these, maybe either gold bars or pipes. But yeah, this is very simple now. At 480 cycles per month, this only requires 300 years of iron ore. And from that you get 800 years of pipes and 100 years of slag out. And your maximum throughput of this, which is quite achievable in that, to some degree, is 144,000 years of ore in. From that, you get 384,000 years of pipes out, and 48,000 years of slag. And then, moving on to our last item. So, these are all the items you can purchase in that, or all the items you can make in that. And all it requires is some coal, and each of the individual items, so you've got your junk cars, dozers, tanks, loaders, and trains. And all these are exactly the same, regardless of what you do in that and choose. But going through the theoretical outputs and all that, so it is 480 cycles per month, 250 years of the junk X in, 100 years of coal, and from that you get 400 years of nails. 300 years of metal, 200 years of metal pipe, 100 years of slag and drum barrels. And the maximum throughput is 120,000 years of junk items in, 100, sorry, 48,000 years of coal in. And from that you get 192,000 years of nails, 144,000 years of metal, 96,000 years of pipe, 48,000 years of slag and barrels out. And yeah, with the junk items and that, 120,000 years of your items and that, it's theoretical possible and that, but if we go back to the recycling center we looked at earlier and that, like for one of the productions and that, because you can do corn, slag, trash cans, or garbage containers, at most for any individual item you're getting, you're getting what, 60,000 years or so? going to need a couple of the recycling centers to have the ability for the maximum input of your junk items so that's just a little thing to note in that 
But yeah, so how do you get gold in that? We'll go over that in a sec, because we've got the gold production here. But we've got the zero factory base game and shed. Yeah, inputs here, outputs here, as I've already gone over. And from what you can see, all these comes in like little pads or box and that, so metal we're all familiar with the normal platinum expansion. Got your drum barrels over here. And then yeah, well I mentioned about the ploy with that. So you get your gold in that and it goes into these little boxes and that. So you can lift these with a pad of fork and that if you wish. Thousand liters each. Then got your slag, so if you want that just as a loose byproduct now in the pallet. That's what it looks like. And then moving on to your metal pipes. And yeah, again these weighs 500 kilograms, but a thousand liters for one D, so very substantial in size and that, but it is worth it, and it's not too heavy to transport, it's just vast in terms of the size and that, so yeah, you know, we have less loaded compared to like your sag or your gold bars and that. But looking at some of these prices and that, so just going back at the top to make sure I don't miss anything. So yeah, you've also got your slag right products. That could be the first one we see. Oh no, it's gonna be your pipes and that. So pipes and that. Again, all the prices are consistent. That so eighteen hundred you can get. May go up a bit more than that depending on where you're sending it to. That for your gold bars, it's definitely worth doing the gold bars compared to the gold. But we'll look at that when we look at the gold production next. But yeah, gold, four and a half thousand years. Play with that, I've already looked at. But yeah, like your nails and that, four and a half grand also. It's going down, so yeah, you've got your sag. Yeah, not the most useful of products and that. 900 years. And the years. I think they are a bit more, you know, not as much of a fluctuation, but. Still some there, regardless of that. But yeah, I don't see anything for like the drum barrels and that. Oh no, no I do, yeah, sorry. I just completely went past it. Yeah, 600 years for the drum barrels. So yeah, overall, it's actually not too bad in fearing that. Like all this is relatively achievable in that. Very easy to produce and sell in that. But yeah, so that is your smelter net. And just a reminder, there's 110,000 years to buy. Find this under build mode. So, first of all, yeah, that's what she was on about. So, yeah, based on the cereal factory and one of the base game sheds. And I think it's this one here. There we go. But yeah, again, not criticism. That's just a little thing to note. But yeah, it makes into your productions. And uh, you'll find this smelter. There it is here. The yeah, overall's not too bad to purchase in that. Relatively easy to place in that, especially on this map where it's all relatively flat. Actually, I think it's perfectly flat down here now, so only to get to the hills. Obviously, as you can see, where it gets a bit more elevated. But anyways, that is the smelter. Next, we're going to be looking at the gold production and. Here we are at the gold production, and this is where you get the gold to have the ability to make the gold bars and that. And this costs 135,000 to buy. Based on the base game, great process and plan, as with a lot of mods we've been seeing. But regardless, yeah, it's a very simple recipe. It just requires water, pay dirt, and coal. You get the pay dirt and coal from the crusher and that, so. And that will have an impact. Again, this will have a general impact on all stuff that requires coal and other items, but I'll explain that in a sec. But yeah, this has a very high throughput, like cycles per month, of 6,480. And this requires a ratio of 2 to 1 to 1. Well, 2 1 1 to get to 1. So 2 years of water to 1 years of Peter and coal, that gets you 1 year of gold. So 500, 250, 250, and you get 250 out. But at 6,408 cycles per month, the stupid <laughs> um, throughputness is like 3.2 million liters of water and 1.6 million liters of the rest of the items. 
However, I don't get ahead of myself in it reproducing anything close to that because with the Crusher on its own as it is at the moment, I'm not sure if you can purchase another Crusher production. Actually, let's have a little look at that because with the Crusher on its own, you're only getting 69,000 years nice of pay dirt a month so that does have an impact on what you're able to do in that so just bear me a sec was and have a look see if you can get a, another crusher in that and the answer to that is no again this may be something may change in the future because as of doing between the recordings and that I have been informed, and I'll explain this at the end of the video now. You're requiring a new game save for consoles and that. At the very least, PC, you can change stuff with the XML files and that. But yeah, big update coming. Just additional to some of the productions and that. But apart from that, nothing else at the moment. But maybe I may make a note to Poor Boy and Bruce on adding that, you know, changing the throughputs and that. Or at least. Add in Crusher and that to be purchasable in that. But regardless, so with the 69,000 litres of pay dirt you get a month, that is what only 138,000 litres of gold you can get. And to get the gold bars in that, 138,000 litres of gold in, that'll get you 469,000 litres of gold bars a month. So now it's a theoretical throughput of gold and gold bars and that. Ah yeah, again, let's look at the prices and that. Because there is a difference in gold and gold bars. So gold on its own is worth 2,500, 2,400 per thousand years. And gold bars are worth double that. So it's pretty much a one-to-one -one comparison that. Well, four and a half, two and a half, it's a theoretical max and that. But what I'm looking at at the moment, as of recording this, is different than that. That's because that is affected by the cabin view station of the average price for gold. So, on average, it's about 2,200, maybe 2,300 if we're lucky in that. And great demand, of course, has an impact on that as well. But yeah, so it is worth doing gold bars of that. But if you just want to save your stuff in that, save your gold in that, sell the gold. And don't worry about making gold bars and that. Save your plywood and coal for me and sell the gold and that. Because your gold will come out in these nice little pallets and that. And actually, I do like these and that. And I wish that's why we have more pay dirt and that. Because I'd love to have like a. Just like a few of these, like 10 of these, you know, make a bunch of gold and that. And have it in a way of like simulating. Especially if there's a gold mine as you can on console and that. But yeah, sort of getting a bit of head himself on that. But yeah, how much does this weigh? It's 310 kilograms, so again, none of these pads are liftable in that, unless you're using the premium pad them or just a normal liftable pallets mod in that by use modding. But yeah, very simple in that. And that is your gold production. Now we're gonna head over to the paper and cardboard or carton roll factory. Now for the paper and cardboard or carton roll factory, this is 145,000 to buy based on the oil mill and that, and simply put, you can produce your paper roll and carton roll. I already mentioned earlier on in the video now about like, some of the high amounts of paper roll and that required. When I said to worry about it, this is why. This is a very P overpowered production. So your input, which is wood chips, is here. And your output is just there, as we've seen. And yeah, let's have a look here. So, you have to like, turn these on that. In terms of capacities, I can see it is a million litres of each. And as I mentioned earlier, getting some wood chips in that ain't going to be a problem in that. And uh, for your paper roll, the ratios is a 3 to 1 at 4,800 cycles per month. 750,000 litres, oh, sorry, 750 litres of wood chips in gets you 250 litres of paper roll and the maximum throughput of that is 3.6 mil of wood chips and from that you can get 1.2 million litres of paper roll 
For your current roll, it's slightly a high ratio than that, at 85 to 35, or divide that by 5, which is 7 and 17 to 7 ratio, basically, at 4,800 cycles per month, again. And from that, you can have a maximum throughput of 4.08 million litres of wood chips in. And from that, you get 1.68 million litres of carotene rollout. So, the productions that requires like that we'll look at in a bit. That is easily manageable. Now, to have worst case scenario, just have a couple of these put down. But, based on the high throughput in that, if you're putting like 7 million litres of wood chips in a month in that, I think you got a problem with logging now. If I don't like logging and just want to make other stuff and get rid of the trees and harm the planet. Joking aside that. But yeah, this is an awesome OP production to have. So, if first of all you're worried about other uh, productions requiring vast amounts of paper roll and cotton roll, don't worry. Don't sweat a thing, baby. It's going to be alright tonight. <laughs> and yeah, 145 grand to buy. It's definitely worth it, that. But if you don't want the other productions and just want to sell everything, of course you can. So paper roll on its own is worth 6,200 on average, or really realistically 5,800. Then 5,700 if you can go to the Camview cell station. And for your carton roll, it's 5,200 and or 10,400 if you go to Camview. With an average sell price of 5,600. So, yeah, this is a very OP production, one that I highly recommend. And next, we'll head on to the cement and asphalt factory. Now, for the cement and asphalt factory, and this is on the more lines of the expensive produ productions 250,000 to buy. In terms of capacity, it is a million litres of sand. And everything else, including the cement and asphalt outputs, are 500,000 litres. So, your input is here. Your output is uh, these two little sections here. And clearly labelled asphalt and cement. And I did notice, I like, there's like, again a bit of a glitchy pallet spawn point. But if you look at the production there, there is no, like, nothing else. There's no waste product in that. And thankfully it wasn't until recording this part tonight on Tuesday, this is how long it's been taking to get this all done in that. Um, I had a little chat with someone, and I got some news again with in terms of the update for Deadwood and that. And one of those items were, if I could find it, oh yeah, here it is, yeah. Add concrete blocks to the asphalt and cement plant. So, my assumption is again, nothing else was said about the power spawn point. This is something I was going to message Bruce and Poor Boy about it after I've done the video on that. Because, again, done a lot of testing, spent 20, 15, 20 hours, whatever it is, testing the map and that. And yeah, like, this was a bit of a opera. Like in the map tour, I make a note of it. But my assumption is, as of recording this, this is where your some concrete blocks is going to be spawning. But again, as of recording this, and this coming out on the 21st or 22nd of May, it's going to be about a month or so before we see an update. Because and the map, I think, it's got to be out for a couple of weeks, like two weeks before an update can be submitted for it. And this is a hot fix or an emergency fix for something game breaking. Again, the update is not game breaking. It is an over, again, overpowered update to the overpowered map in a way. That's how I would call it. But, anyways, on to the actual production itself. I just thought to mention that. And again, I'll leave notes on that in the comment section down below on everything about this video because this is a vast. Yeah, yeah, this took a while to do in that, but it is worth it in that. But, anyways, on to the actual production itself. So, you get cement or asphalt. Theoretically, you use these for a bit of role-playing stuff, you know, putting roads down and that. In terms of where production-wise, uh, I'm pretty sure it's not needed anywhere else. No, it ain't, so... Cement, I'm just checking that one. Nope, so... Yeah, cement and asphalt, you can sell. In terms of sell prices and that, so... 
They are a pretty low value because they are a popular commodity, so a high output common commodity, so they ain't going to hold as much as, you know, like jet fuel and that, like kerosene and that, for example. But regardless, the average sale price is around 660 give or take a few dozen, couple of dozen here and there, so 600 at the windmill sell all, or 757 at the debris crusher, but if, regardless of that, I was going to say, but for the asphalt, so again, looking here, looking at 1,800 on average, peak price of 2,200 at the debris crusher, and if you go to the debris crusher sex. I think actually there is a use of these, so crusher and that. Oh no, no, it's actual debris, debris crusher, so that is just over here. So yeah, it's just down here, next to the gold production you'll find on the map normally in that. And I think there's also a beehive over here that's going to be sell, or have the ability to sell in the new update, but again, back, just get back on track in that, so Going back to our production, so what I'm just going to do is go over here, and there we go, back here, and, yeah, and that's fully loaded, and that is as empty as much as it can, just quickly empty it, just to show the outputs and that, but in terms with the recipes and ratio, so this requires sand, lime, stone powder, diesel and gravel. For the cement, for the asphalt, it just requires sand and gravel and diesel. For the asphalt, it is 700 litres of gravel, 200 litres of sand and 50 litres of diesel or fuel. For the cement, it is 700 litres of sand, 500 litres of lime, 200 litres of stone powder, all of which you can get from the actual crusher net, and 50 litres of diesel. Yet 1,100 years of cement, and same with the asphalt. Terms with maximum throughput in that, theoretically in that. For the cement, it is a million years of sand, 720,000 years of lamb, lime, not lambs, 288,000 years of stone powder, and 72,000 years of diesel. And theoretically, you can get like 1.584 mil of cement. For the asphalt, gravel, input is a million years. For the sand it is 288,000 and 72,000 years of diesel and the same amount of output but again as we mentioned about the crusher itself in terms with the throughput that how much you can generate in that in a month and that and because it's not purchasable at the moment but maybe in the future updating that but I don't know at the moment yeah, it's a bit less than that, but again, you get the general gist of it in that, so, what's that? 700, 900, 1450 for 1100. And for the asphalt, you're looking at 950 to 1100, so... If you had to pick one that, maybe I'll say do the asphalt, because... Lime in that is good, useful in that. Again, if you're producing tons of lime, you can spare a bit of lime here and there, then by all means, make cement in that. But if you're a bit tight on lime and that, depending on what you're doing, depending on what your playthrough is and what you're doing. Yeah, really I'll say stick to asphalt, but again, it's on person by person case, on how you're playing the map and how you've got your farm or farm set up. But anyway, so that is the cement and asphalt factory done. We're almost there now, and next we're gonna head on to the crude oil production. And here we are at the crude oil production. 250,000 to buy and there is a couple recipes for this so we have a quick look at that so you get crude oil from sand pipes and water and that or really just go simple and that just water and that there are productions that you can distribute war and that and have like a million years of war and that so that is a very good one to have but if you want a bit more realistic then yeah the pipes and sand is the one for you but yeah, again, as with all these productions, can be found under build mode. I know I haven't gone through everything in build mode and that. But yeah, unless it doesn't produce anything, I will mention it. But anything else can and will be found in the build mode and that. So, got your crude oil production. So, if I can find that a sec. There it is. So yeah, it's a bit of a big thing. It's more tall than 
actual square footage size, but actually, got a little shed, a little silo in the way, a input here, and in a way, like a little drill now, you know, like a drill that goes into the ground, comes up, gets distracted, gets stored, and that's where you can output it and all that over. Actually, you can't output it, but you can distribute it. Actually, I'm pretty sure you can output this right. Again, I'll test that in a sec because that doesn't make sense if you can't extract this via this bit here. But regardless, so for the crude oil recipe one, it is 1,400 cycles per month, requires 50 liters of sand, 25 liters of pipe, so not too much, and 100 liters of water, and that gets you 100 liters of crude oil, and it is a million liters. For your pipes and oil, it is 250,000, as you can see here. But yeah, so that ain't too bad, or yeah, if you want to just go a bit more of a cheat way. Anyway, I'll call it cheating that, but again, depends on your inter interpretation of it. I didn't mind it at all on that. But yeah, so for the crude oil with just the water and that, 1,400 cycles per month as well. And that requires 500 liters of water to 100 liters of crude oil, so 5 to 1 in that, in comparison to a 17.5 to 10 ratio there. But regardless, so the water to oil in that, you may be thinking, we have got something very similar to this on the mod hub, the crude oil production by, I think it's Bart Snow V3 in that, where you can get crude oil from air in that. But it's not the same. In the way, yeah, it's not the same that, but it's very sim similar. You can get water sources free in that on the map. There are mods in that you can get cheap or free water as you wish, as I've already mentioned. But yeah, so the theoretical throughput of all this is again limitation on the sand in that. So not so much the pipe in that, but it's more of the foundations where you're restricted. But theoretically, put 720,000 euros of water in. And that will get you 144,000 years of crude oil out a month. And for the realistic recipe, 72,000 years of sand, 36,000 years of pipes, and 144,000 years of water. And that will get you 144,000 years of crude oil. So yeah, let's quickly test that output now. So let me just go grab a tanker a sec. So there we go. This should work in that. So yeah, again, just having a quick test in that. So that's going to be your input. And yeah, as a full emo, there ain't a marker in that. Yeah, I assume there was an output point. Worst case scenario, you can distribute in that. And that is like required at the BGA in that, or you can sell it at the BGA if you don't have it purchased, the grocery marts, or any of your sell all items or item whatever areas. And yep, yeah, average prices are very the same in that, regardless of the fluctuation. So, 1800 on average, give or take a couple of dozen here and there. And yep, yeah, if you've got a tanker that supports multi fruits and that, as with, we looked at the cement and asphalt production now, like the TARDIS stuff and that, and the Colossus stuff, then yeah, you don't have to be limited to the map traders and that, if you want to use sword traders, modded ones, then by all means, feel free to use it. Again, depends on how you want to play the game, as always. But, regardless, that is the crude oil production, 250,000 in supply. And yeah, since this is a bit of a fundament, or fundamental to the biogas plant, so let's just quickly remind ourselves, or if you're just watching this, of what the crude oil is required at the BJ. So if we have a look, one of your field types is crude oil. And that is because it is required to get your propane, diesel and kerosene as a crude oil diesel production with the byproduct, or by products, sorry of propane and kerosene, your jet fuels and that. But again, at the end of the day, it's not a fundamental requirement in that. Again, it's just a purely optional one. But yeah, so that is the crude oil production. Next, we're head on to the charcoal and pellet production. Now for the charcoal and pellet production, this is 125 grand to buy. 
And this is where you can get your charcoal and put in your pet palette. So we have a look here. Got a couple spawned up already, a few charcoals and that. So yeah, in terms with your inputs and that, so inputs is here, output is here, trigger to purchase and that is here and that. So in terms with capacities, it is two million years for the coal, a million years for the rest of your inputs, and for your outputs, it is a hundred thousand years. So if we have a look here, so charcoal and pioneer pellets. So the charcoal requires coal, bark, and carton rolls. That is a 12,000 cycles per month, 50, 50, and 150. That gets you 100 of charcoal, so that is 25 to 10, or was it 5 to 2 ratio now, if you want to simplify it. For your pioneers, 1,200 cycles per month, and requirements are 50 coal, 125 liters of sawdust, and 100 liters of metal. And that will get you your pioneer pallets, or pellets, sorry, pellet pallets. <laughs> I hate saying that, pellet pallets. But yeah, in terms with the theoretical throughput and that, again, depends on the limitations for your coal production and that. As well as even like the bark and sawdust, what you're getting from the sawmill, what you're producing from there, because they're byproducts and that, and can be distributed over here. But regardless, so theoretically, it is. 600,000 years of coal and bark and of 1.8 million years of cart and roll pellets. It is 60,000 years of coal, 150,000 years of sawdust, and 120,000 years of paper roll. So that is perhaps the more realistic, ideal theoretical output. Again, if you're buying products in, then it's different, of course, with all these productions. But just in terms of what the map is offering and what you can produce without having to buy stuff. I'm just saying that, and also the output for your pellets is 180,000 litres of theoretical output per month. And yet, the product from production isn't, isn't needed from any further productions. So, my recommendation for these, like with the cement and asphalt, is to sell. Or again, feel free to use it for a role playing aspect. And yeah, if you want to look at terms with outputs and that, so the charcoal is 6.66 times faster. And bigger compared to the pellets, and the pellet sells on average for three times as much as coal. But again, because of the theoretical limit of the coal that you're buying it in, I personally would say the pioneer pellets is more worth doing in terms of existing long term process. But yeah, so in terms of sell prices, so you have to sell both of these. But at the moment, I've noticed the charcoal doesn't sell up on the prices, so we go into our prices tab, so this is all the new stuff here, so again, I'll have a quick look on top, but yeah, pretty sure I missed it, well not missed it, it doesn't pop up, it doesn't pop down the bottom that, but if we go into your items here, so you got your control and all that, you got normal coal, Pioneer pellets now they sell for about 4,500, 4,400. On average, it is five grand, but of course, that's impacted by the cabin view cell station at just under 9,000. But yeah, just quick to show you here now. Yeah, there is absolute nothing for charcoal. I've got your custom crops here, Nat, and absolutely nothing. And yeah, nothing down here because it's all your. Premium and platinum expansion stuff. However, you're still able to sell the coal and it sells for about as much as the iron ore does at around 1820 or 1820 per thousand years, give or take about 50 bucks here and there. So, if I show the iron ore sec, so that is just here, only sells for about 450 in that. But yeah, your iron ore. Yes, yeah, around the 1800 mark. Yeah, Debra Crusher is 2250. But yeah, the average is 1850. And that's how much it roughly sells for. And I'll demonstrate that right now by putting one of these down. So, going to our productions and sell points. And just whack this one down. Like so. So you can't lift in that. Let's go and grab a... Tell you a sec. 
and I'll show you how much you can get per pallet. And yeah, because of the margins are not widely different than that. Personally, I would say, take what I'm saying and what you're seeing here. And yeah, it's about a fluctuation of 50 bucks here and there and that. Again, this may be fixed in the next update and that, so this could be one of the things I'll mention to Bruce and that. Okay, that was a bit of an awkward one, so... 31 plus... 1,795, so yeah, about 18, 28 and 30. But yes, yeah, sell an entire pallet on its own, so it all pops up in one go. So yeah, 1,826, so the fluctuation ain't gonna be that much for charcoal. And again, just gonna show with your pellets and that. So the pellet pallets are 1,050 liters. A very weird thing, that, but... But yeah, if we look at the Pioneer pellets, and uh, where you can sell it, so... Cam view, charcoal... Grocer. So yeah, it says it sells all. Let's see if we can set it at the grocer mark. So where is that? Two think it's actually just down here. But yeah, let's go and see how much we sell this for. Grocer mark and again, not able to sell it, so I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong in that, because this is a sell point at. This is your grocer mark now, so if go to the PDA. So yeah, grocer mark just here now. It says it accepts in that, but maybe it's not being a trade or something, I think. Because, yeah, I've got the pallet in that. And yeah, it's not selling at all, so it did move it into a trade on that. And I'll go with the sell point that is on the map. And yeah, once again, I'm not able to sell unless it's like something like here. Sell wood and that, but no. So, okay, that may be a bit broken, unless I'm doing something wrong in that, but besides from that, and I'll try it one more time by using oh, one of these. So, we'll go into my productions and sell points once more and use the mobile utilities more than that so I want not you I want yeah just that one there I got purchased the freaking land all right fine 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 but yes going to our production sell points once again whack you down there and exit and can we sell it now usually that would just start selling whatever's there so yeah, it's definitely a bug of some sort because I've used this for like the other stuff and that and it works fine. So again, I'm not sure why this is the case, but again, another thing I'll mention to Poor Boy and Bruce about this. But yeah, so for now, my first recommendation, so we get back to our production stuff and that. So charcoal and pellets. So yeah, what I'll do for now is set the Pioneer Pellets to sell. And yeah, we get a bit of an income again for the pellets itself. Now, regardless of the broken sell point, it'll sell at the average price, so about 5000 at its maximum, potentially. And from that, what it would do is, I think it's like a 20% or 30% cut, depends on what economy mode you're on. But yeah, so again, a bit of a bummer on that, but again, it's one of those things we tested that and that's how maps gets updated in that, in terms of where things work in that. Because yeah, there is 23 overpowered production, so having a pallet issue or one of the issues with the output products then is to be semi-expected, but it's what it is at the end of the day. Regardless, that is the charcoal and pioneer pellet production. Next, we're going to head on to our feed production before going to the garbage production on a, another save file. So, here we are, we're at our feed production. And this is where you can get all of your items for your animals and that. So, we have a look. So, yeah, from here you can make silage, compost, TMR, or compost is byproduct, pig food, hay, and sweet feed that can be used. 
Also, I'm going to show off these new bells and that, but we'll go over that in a sec. Well, yeah, this is 100,000 to purchase, so very cheap. And the capacities are all half a million litres, or 500,000 litres. And yeah, from here you can get silage from grass, silage from alfalfa, cow feed, but yeah, the cow feed requires soybeans and sunflower, the, some of the more premium stuff. So this is going to be premium cow food nap, but it is what it is. And um, if you want to use this, then by all means, feel free to use it. But me personally, especially when we go through the potential throughputs now, which is quite high, don't get me wrong, throughput of TMR and that is very high. But there's mods I could do like 1.7, 1.8 mil a month for that, so. And that's with or without mineral feeds. This doesn't require mineral feeds. Get your pig food and that, typical recipe and that, no complaints there. Hay from grass with a bit of compost byproduct, a one to one. Alfalfa hay. And then got your sweet feed. And yep, sweet feed. It's all pretty much the same. It's all the different straws now. So you got your corn straw, your soybean straw, and your normal straw. And also you got your different sweet stuff. So you got sugar cane as your sweet product. Sugar or your honey. But regardless. The ratios and that are all exactly the same, and the throughputs. But yeah, let's go over the maximum throughputs potentially in that. So, yeah, 100,000 to buy for silage it is 1.2 million years of grass in. And from that, you do lose a little bit, and out of that, you'll get 1.08 million years as a return. And the extra 120,000 years you've lost is compost. So, Overall, not too bad. A what's that? Ten percent loss. Yeah, not too bad. All things considering, makes sense in that in real life. And yeah, this is the same with the alfalfa and that for your cow feed. So this requires hay, soybeans, and flour at two thousand four hundred cycles per month. So five hundred, four hundred, and three hundred respectively. That gets you five hundred years of TMR and two hundred years of compost. So you do lose stuff in terms of litre per litre during the process, but again, that makes sense now. Regardless for the TMR net, theoretically at this ratio net, you can get 1.2 million years of TMR per month, on top of 480,000 years of compost, 960,000 years of soybeans, and 720,000 years of sunflower. But yeah, for example, the soybeans and that, a million years of soybeans a month. Yeah, unless you're buying it in, you can have that, and if you harvest the entire map, 960 million years of soybeans, that's what? Five, six mil you could potentially get, so... <clears throat> actually, let's have a look here for ourselves quickly, so... Soybeans on its own. That on its own can yield you, yeah, 2,000. Oh, well, yeah, we're on normal economy, so yeah, 2,000. That so, a million years, yeah, that's about 2 million you can get from soybeans. That or cow feed. If it's me, I'll sell that. I'll sell the sunflower, yeah, 720,000 you could get or could use, yeah, 1.4 mil, 1.3 mil on average, and that so. Yeah, personally, I would, I wouldn't do that. But again, that's just me and that. For your pig food, so for your inputs, it is three hundred liters of corn, barley, soybeans, and potatoes. And your output is five hundred liters of pig food and hundred liters of compost. Two thousand four hundred cycles per month. So the theoretical output is. Oh, sorry, 720,000 years of each of the crop types in, and 1.2 million years of feeds you'll get as the output, on top of 240,000 years of compost, so, yep, yeah, not too bad, theoretically possible, but again, soybeans and that, but yeah, soybeans is one of those that is commonly used for pig food, and if you're needing, what was it, 720,000 years of pig feed, no, sorry, 1.2 million years of pig feed a month. 
you'll go with other Molly productions like or multiple of these to have the ability to sell that or to well, not sell that, purchase that and all that. But yeah, not too bad overall. Now for your hay stuff and that so yeah it says let's say it shows grass and that and we have a look here. It does say grass. However, this area is a different so if you put a grass bell in, I'll say grass here on the tab, you won't be able to use that as alfalfa grass net or whatever because yeah, even though it doesn't show, there is a difference and this is the same with the straw as we go through in that. But yeah, just something I thought worth mentioning, but regardless for both normal hay and alfalfa hay, it is 2004 cycles per month. And from that, actually, no slight difference. Apologies here, but yeah, for just normal hay, it's 300 hundred for the alfalfa hay in that. And yeah, the theoretical throughputs is for your normal hay, seven hundred twenty thousand years of grass in gets you seven hundred twenty thousand years of hay, and two hundred and forty thousand years of compost. For your alfalfa hay, that is one point two million years of alfalfa in, and one point two million of alfalfa hay out. Along with 240,000 years of compost. Now for your sweet food in that, or sweet feed in that, that can be used. So yeah, 250 liters of straw, 150 years of your sugar crop, and our sugar input in that, as I put down my notes, and 125 liters of oats. And yeah, oats is the same, just double checking, it is for all of it. And from that, you get 500 years of sweet feet and 100 years of compost. So, what's that? 300, 400, 525. So, yeah, overall, it's a your net gain in this essence, but yeah, not by much. But regardless, so for the maximum possible throughput, it is 600,000 years of straw in, along with 360,000 years of your sweet product. So, sugar cane sugar or honey in that. Probably add those, I'll say sugar cane or sugar is the more realistic one that is achievable in that. Again, depends on the size of your fields in that. And 300,000 liters of oats. And from that you get 1.2 million liters of sweet feet and 240,000 liters of compost out. But yeah, that's that. And yeah, I thought just with this now, I'll quickly go over the short bells in that. So, We've got your normal straw bell, 9,000 years, 430 kilograms. You got your soybean straw, again, different in that. You can tell the different colours in that. It's a lot darker in that. And yeah, even though this was a small bell I produced, the corn straw is exactly the same as the rest. And yet there's a difference in that as well, a thing to note. There is a difference. And yeah. I'll do maybe do a separate video on the straw on its own that. But yeah, all these can go in as they are. But one thing I will say is soybean straw is worth exactly the same as normal straw. Corn straw is a completely different game in that, so yeah, just gonna show you just throw these in. Yeah, theoretically, if you collect these straw with like the laser forest you pick up in that, you can put the loose stuff in that. But yeah, just show off. Get straws going in. There we go. I think we fit the limit for the straw there. However, if we go down, so soybean straw, we're pretty much the same with like a couple of percentage differences. This is only two bucks you're looking at, but again, that is su subject to inflation. And that, well, not inflation, but the dynamic in the prices and that. Of what I mean. However, corn straw is worth absolute bank. On average, a thousand and eighty-five per thousand years. That is over ten times the amount of soybean and for the corn and that and uh, yeah I'm gonna do a test video now I think on the straw output and that but yeah it's just something I thought about to do that so yeah personally avoid corn straw for your production do pretty much anything else so if we have a look 
So you're corn straw with the honey and sugar cane, so yeah, theoretically. You use soybean straw there or just normal straw there, so Well actually no sorry, correction. Why am I talking about got fuck's sake I gotta edit this now? But yeah, normal straw ain't accepted here. What was on about, sorry, but yeah. Actually try to put a normal straw bell in. Completely classifies it differently, so you know what I just said, that is all soybean straw. So personally, I'll stick with soybean straw now. The yieldage for the straw now is similar to base game straw net but yeah a separate test video will have to be done on that and here we are on our other save file i've been testing this on and we've got the garbage production and as i mentioned in the intro this at the moment can only be found in new farm mode maybe in the updates that's going to be coming out maybe in about a month's time give or take depending on how draws gets through testing where this may be purchasable and that in the build mode and that, but until then, yeah, absolute nothing. But yeah, so if we go and have a look, so in build mode, just to confirm and clarify. So yeah, we've got our dead wood productions here and that. So feed production, charcoal, gold production, no garbage, green dryer bakery that and that is it so yeah here to get this on new farm remote of course because when you come on here on new farm remote this is already here on top of your feed production so yeah our garbage process inside over here and also you get your feed mixer and somewhere here well more get rid of that I think I did but yeah regardless yeah cost nothing to buy and yeah this is a very slow churn process and really you only need this if you're using either the premium and such or the platinum expansion dlc and it produces trash cans and garbage containers so yeah we have a look here so yeah we look at the all of the inputs so you got all of your platinum expansion stuff and yeah different ratios and that and yeah I'm not going to break down on everything. I've done a rough average, which I'll explain in a bit. On top of that, you've got all your soup, so your beetroot, parsnip, and potato soup. Not the triple soup or anything like that. You've got your preserved beetroot snacks, and also your crisps as well. So, in terms with the recipes, there are 25 recipes. And for the premium stuff, so these ones here, different ratios and different inputs and all that throughout. But on average, I've done the math and in terms with the usability. So for example, the bathtub here, that is 1880, 1800 per month. For your premium expansion stuff and that, so all your soups and that. In terms with the throughputs and that, it's yeah, about 50 litres in and 120 cycles per month, so that is what, 600, no sorry, 6,000 I think, sorry, yeah 6,000 in, and from that you can get 720 charge cans and 1,440 containers a month, and yeah, this is again a rough average now uh, yeah i could break down this all individually now but it's all pretty much the same slightly different outputs now like the crisp and that you get more bang for your buck in that but of course you get more soups and that so kind of balance itself out on that moving on to your platinum stuff that you can sell again too many to bloody deal with again breaking down every individual one and yeah really in a way it's worth it in a way it's not it's worth it because you actually get the correct averages and the correct stuff for everything. However, not everyone does, you know, prefabricate walls or shingles and that or whatever it is. So I've done on a average and in terms of your output on average, you get 20 trash cans and 30 garbage containers a month. Again, that is on average now. Oh, sorry, per recipe, not per month. But yeah, again, it's an average now. Sort of see does fluctuate a bit above and below that 
and also like the cycles per month as well. Some are 60, 96 or like 72 cycles per month. But on average, the cycles per month is 85. So with 20 trash cans and 30 containers, multiply that by 85 cycles per month for that. So on average, you'll get about 1,700 cans and 2,550 garbage containers per recipe in that for your platinum stuff. So since we know the rough estimates now, if we use all of the 25 recipes in that, combine that with the premium stuff, try not to get two DLCs mixed up, per month, on average roughly in that, you'll get about 42,500 trash cans and 63,000 and 750 a month but again this is a rough average and the actual output and that for these if you're using everything that is about give or take a thousand and that yeah a lot of these items are used for like smelter making that making the nails and yeah as i mentioned it's a very slow and not non purchasable production that so unless you really want to use the trash cans to make you know, things like your metal here and your nails, which we looked at earlier in that. You see, the capacity in that is 250,000 litres. Like with everything else, as I mentioned in that section of this video now. But regardless, unless you actually really need this and that. Personally, is it worth it that? It's one of the things, it's waste now at the end of the day. So going back up. Yeah, it's just turning things that you're not using and making use of it for something else. But besides from that, you can use these as well, the trash cans and garbage containers for the recycling center and that, or whatever it's called, we'll look at that in a sec. But yeah, personally, if I was using this, which I am going to maybe do a little let's play on this before the update, yes I know it's going to require a new game save with the update and that, but regardless, personally, if you got the premium expansion, just use it for that, personally and that. You get your soups and parsnips, you get tons of these. But yeah, again, throughput ain't the greatest, so again, at the end of the day, it all comes down to what you prefer, that. Personally, I'm glad we have this as an option, that. But yeah, in terms with actual cost, and like, is it worth doing and selling as is? Because we go into our prices, and yeah, we do a bit of a comparison of what goes in and what comes out. So, for example, if we look at our trash cans and garbage containers, they sell for about 2,000 on average per 1,000 litres. Which on its own doesn't seem too bad, but when you're considering, yeah, all these items are like 5,000, 9,000, oh, sorry, not that's metal, sorry, go through the wrong one. So, yeah, like prefabricated rules 15,000 or 30,000, that. Yeah, it does really put it into perspective that, for example, if I go to like prefabricate rules, that is, yes, not a lot. You're actually losing a lot of money in that. In terms of pure profit now, if you're selling these, it's not profitable now. I'd rather sell these items as they are that, and get the profit from elsewhere, from other productions and that. But yeah, as I mentioned that with the trash cans and that be used for the smelter, not for smell for the recycling. I'm gonna go over here now. So we've already gone over this earlier. But yeah, just to have a look. So yeah, you use trash cans to get your junk items and your garbage containers for those. And yeah, when you compare that to the corn and slag for the recycling center, it is a to get these junk items for, uh, what was it? Yeah, for the smelter and that. It's not worth doing really in that. But again, it's something new. It's something fun to do in that. And at the end of the day, that's something I prefer in that sometimes, especially with all these modded productions and that. Like new items that, new things as a byproduct in that. I'm actually all in for, so, yeah, with the garbage, process in that. It's one of those you sort of take it or leave it in that at the end of the day. And yeah, I think to be honest, that is everything we've covered in that. So yeah, so come my notes. <laughs> Nothing else on the garbage production that. So yeah, I think time for the outro and that I'll go back to the other game save. As we sort of do a bit of a final wrap up in that and I just 
So I'm going to have my thoughts after spending days recording this and that and editing it. And yeah, just sort of see how it all comes out. As the sun is setting here, and yep, yeah, end of the video here, and yep, yeah, final thoughts in that. And to be honest, yep, yeah, when I say about 23 overpowered productions, yeah, for the most part, it is very true in that. There are tons of items you can have, and again, you don't need to have all of these. You don't need to purchase all of these, like outright in that, in terms of where placing them now, because a lot of these are already on the map as I shown in the map tour map so you can purchase these where they are and that and again like again with the buying stations and that so yeah you can use the buying station by the map maker or if you want to use a modded one have a bit of a discount use the easy way and fruit shop station that is an option there and yeah like terms with uh, throughputs and that like theoretical capacities and that and maximum output yeah a lot of this does come from the crusher now where you get your coal lime and all that at the end of the day you can purchase these items if you wish and yeah just use a my fruit trailer or use the trailers by poor boy and bruce's gaming on the map here both of them are really good in that and the ones by poor boy and bruce they do have a very high output in terms of the discharging rate so that's that going for them and yeah, things all which personally now it's like the crusher and that, the ability to have a second one of these. Yeah, not, not so much change the recipes and that or the ratios and that. That I'm fine with, to be honest. It's really in terms with have the ability to purchase another crusher and that. In terms with sawmill now, and like I'll go through all these one by one. Yeah, definitely worth having, definitely worth purchasing. As I mentioned, all of these are worth purchasing. You don't need them. Again, you don't need the premium and platinum expansion, but it does help with making full use of the map. To be honest, personally, if I have to choose the premium or platinum expansion, for me, it's the platinum expansion. Through and through, new forestry equipment and that, and the ability to, you know, self align with the tree harvester header and that. Definitely worth it, that. And yeah, to be honest, awesome production to have. The BGA, yeah, with the new update that's going to be coming, this will be already on your game save and that, when you're first coming in that. I think it's at least for a new farm mode, that makes sense. I'm not sure on farm manager start from scratch, but when that map comes out, or when the map update comes out, I will do a little review video on it. But yeah, as it is, again, kerosene and that can make absolute banks for this and that and yeah it's like a full one production guide to now where I break down like sell prices and that in terms with you know how much you can get a month just use what I've already said and yeah just multiply by how much you can set it for but yeah crude oil production and that I'm not sorry the BG and that with the crude oil and that definitely worth it that because yeah you get your propane and some diesel and that but yeah like to be honest, like the diesel is just a real byproduct now. Like you're gonna go through 2,400 years in a month, and then you're running multiple big combine harvesters and that. But again, with that, just use anything else like the wood chips and that. That's a good bang for the buck and that. Like 100, 100 wood chips to 500 diesel. Yes, please. Fire production. Yeah, something different than that. And if you want this one here, which is up here. It is absolutely beautiful on that. Let's go back to Grim Mill Sec or somewhere just so do have the background noises. But yeah. The wood and that a bit of a finicky one to do, but it's definitely worth doing in terms with profit wise and again, it's a new crop and that or not new crop, a new item that. Grey Mill, love the overpoweredness and that and yeah. To be honest, that goes with everything else, like it's just all been slightly tweaked by poor boy and Bruce and that. From what I've heard, uh, Bruce is the idea guy and poor boy is the actual skill man, so like the brain and the brawn and that kind of thing of Bruce had the ideas of it and poor boy, amazing map maker, implemented it. Actions a lot more easier if you're like new to farm sim and that, like new to new to productions and that all in general. And to be honest, this would be a good model map to play on. Offers everything as I mentioned map tour and that. The productions itself, which is this video is about, is very easy. 
yeah, maybe a little bit expensive than that, but I think, yeah, apart from the BGA, is like 1.18 mil, whatever it is. So, a lot of these are like the Crusher is half a mil, that's the most expensive one, I'll admit. But everything else is a quarter of a mil or less, and if you want to utilize it realistically ish, depending on your own place on that, all of these productions are profitable and will get your money back within a month or two, if not within the year at the latest. So, to be fair, yeah, personally, I'll say yes, everything. And yeah, like root crop processing, as we're looking at here, if you got the premium expansion, then yeah, by all means, use this production. Otherwise, it is pretty much useless, besides from the sugar and that. But besides from that, and yeah, actually, I'm not sure, you know, you can't get crisp, I don't think, without the premium expansion. But yeah, that's my final thoughts on that. Like, again, amazing this is, and yeah, to be honest, I'm just lost for words pretty much. I'm not scripting this bit here and that. But yeah, all productions are worth it, and I do recommend downloading the map and playing the map. To be honest, and yeah, at the end of the day, it is a cracking map. And the productions are extremely profitable at the end of the day. So yeah, that's where I'm going to leave it today. I know this is going to be a long one, but as always, there's going to be time stamps down below. And to be honest, I want to give everything a fair shout. And I know I've made some blunders of recording, and of course a lot of editing. But, regardless, all these productions are worth having. And yeah, at the end of the day, that's all that matters. So, as always, hope you find this helpful and informative in some way, shape or form. If so, smash the button, feel free to down below, which is to do, hope you're going to stay, but for now, it's be far more Envoy Stream, and I'll see you all uh, very soon.